We're getting ready for a card full of prospects who hope to be household names in the near future. In the Coachella Desert, our main event tonight, John Scrappy Ramirez from LA takes on Mexico's Luis Padilla in a 10 round scrap at 115 pounds. But before that, Gucci Manny Flores from nearby Coachella takes on heavy handed Franklin Gutierrez of Venezuela in an eight round bout. First up though, a battle of heavyweights between Zach Spiller and Khalil Carter in a four round matchup. That's followed by Venezuela's Stephanie Cohen taking on Texas Leanne Calderon in a four round bantamweight bout. Then 18 year old Grant Flores, who's set to make his pro debut against Jorge Lopez at Super Welterweight. And then a battle of minimum weights, Lorraine Villalobos uh, Whittier, California takes on New Mexico's Kent Lindenmuth. And agile feet. Good uppercut. So Ramirez, a big fan of Scrappy as he lands. The 
ring. A knockout of the year contender. Now he walks in with that swagger. Always looking good. Always dapper. Always smiling. Always bringing the energy. But what's he going to bring tonight? He said it's his time. It's scrap season according to the Jersey he wore yesterday at the weigh-ins. He's feeling really confident about himself. And with good reason, he has a good team behind himself. And he's the main event on Golden Boy Fight Night. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be. Live on The Zone, I'm Bethel Duran, alongside current world champion and 2012 Olympic medalist Marlene Esparza. And Marlene, Golden Boy Fight Night is all about giving these young fighters an opportunity to shine. This is a great exposure for them, isn't it? Absolutely. It's uh, everybody, today is the day you're going to show who you are. You are who you say you are, and today's the day to do it. Everybody's uh, matched up appropriately. Everybody's going to have a war, and you're really going to have to show out and say, you know, prove who you are. You know, swim and don't get wet for swim everybody. Swim and don't get wet. I like yes. that. We'll be talking about that more. Six <laughs> fights coming your way, but Marlene in our main event, Scrappy Ramirez, he doesn't lack confidence. He comes in, and he's talking a big game. What do you want to see from him he tonight? He really needs to back up his talk. This is the time to do it, and this is where he's going to have that pitiful moment. It's time to, like, step onto the new stair, basically. Keep going, and you gotta you got to elevate. So now it's his time to show, and now it's his time to shine. He has to swim and not get wet. Use your foot movement. Make sure that you're as good and as brilliant as you say you are. And now it's his time to do it. His opponent, the Luis Padilla from Mexico, he's fought in Europe, he's fought in Mexico, he's got the experience on his side. He really wasn't impressed with Scrappy talking. No, he wasn't. And he came off like a stone cold killer, which is, you know, a bit dangerous. Uh, he knows that what he can do, he brings something to the table. And I don't think he's he's afraid at all. And it's going to really, we're really going to find out tonight who's the better fighter and who deserves to win. It'll be a good one in our main event. For more on Scrappy's journey to where he is tonight, from LA to the main event, let's go to the third member of our crew, Brandy Flores. Two years ago, Scrappy Ramirez was fighting on undercards in Mexico. Fast forward to his last fight, he knocked Salvatierra out of the ring and then proceeds to call out the champions in his weight class. During fighter meetings, Scrappy told us that he has the ability and skills to be among the best. And that confidence doesn't come from nowhere. As a kid, Scrappy played football and because of his size, he was often overlooked, picked last even, until people saw what the, he could do and then everybody wanted a piece. Scrappy says that he might have been an underdog, but he's always been on top. And now as a boxer, he thrives under the bright lights and he loves proving people wrong after all pressure makes diamonds right guys guys will we see that diamond shine bright like a diamond tonight though brandy will we get that in our main event anthony joshua katie taylor jesse bam rodriguez the zone brings you some of the biggest names in boxing in the coming months don't miss any of the action all available via your the zone subscription no pay-per-view Inside the event center, getting ready for our Golden Boy Fight Night card to commence. Six fights coming your way, and it's gonna get going with the heavyweights. Zachary Spiller, Khalil Carter are gonna get after it. Not much experience behind them, but Carter and Spiller are expected to slug. Uh, let's go to our ring announcer, Joe Martinez.
talking. And we'll get his mic situated for you. Zach Spiller, 29 years old. Khalil Carter, 21. Spiller, 2-0 from Houston, Texas. Marlene, you're from Houston. What do we know about Zach Spiller? I know that he's a, a young fighter, but very dedicated and very interested in trying to be the best. Uh, experienced as far as who he trains with, but um, still still hungry and still trying to figure out what he's doing. And that's his opponent, Khalil his Carter. Opponent, Carter. Long yes. Beach. Uh, Carter actually caught my eye a bit. Uh, you know, not that much experience, but feel, uh, from my understanding, feels like he really wants this. It's gonna be a really, it's a, it's gonna be a really good war. Yeah, and there is Zach Spiller, Houston, Texas, two and zero, two KOs. He's six foot five, and Spiller weighing in at two sixty five. Carter six one two twenty seven. Spiller only four amateur fights. Carter zero amateur fights. But with the heavyweights. You can develop them second. later because they're older. And bigger. One punch right, can guys. change the game yeah, 100% absolutely. with a heavyweight. Right. Yeah. Spillers, right both here victories here via KO. Khalil right Carter's here above three King. victories via KO. It's scheduled for four rounds, Marlene. I don't know if we're going to get that. because I don't think we will. I don't think we will. I'm expecting a knockout. And I don't know from which side. Having watched film from both of these guys, not much out there. I, I well, I, I know uh, Carter well, and um, I I mean he's a good fighter, he's a good boxer, but I haven't seen Zachary or Spiller. And that's Carter on your screen right now. That's the look that he has. He did not smile. He got a little motion. We'll get into that as we are underway. But these two actually know each other because last year. They both fought on a card in Tijuana, Mexico, and they looked at each other like, oh yeah, I know you. Um, at one point, Carter even asked if he could borrow Spiller's gloves because he didn't like what was going on in Mexico, but he ended up using his own. So he looked at each other, they saw each other the way, like, oh yeah, I know you, I know you. So what do we expect in this one, Marlene? I don't know. It's just big dudes we are going to slug. They're going to slug, and it's going to be who wants it more. And that's in every fight, but because of the experience, it's really going to be who can be tactical and who can really land the big shot. They're both very careful, and they're they're both being very careful. But someone's going to show out, and it won't last long. The patience won't last long. Spiller, the southpaw. Six foot five, he's from Texas and did not play football. You would think that's a defensive end, maybe a tight end. No, no football, no basketball. He said he'd run the other way from those coaches. Carter, in the blue and yellow, was actually a defensive player at Lakewood High School. Played some football, which played in junior college a little bit, and said, nah, I needed something. He also wrestled in high school, so he tried MMA. He's like, nah, box is the calling for him. Even in the first uh, minute, Spiller is showing that he has more tactical. He's more tactical. See that? Yeah, he's a lot more tactical. But Carter, I feel like he's maybe just luring him in. He's kind of just kind of waiting to land what he needs to land. Yeah, and in the heavyweight division, one punch can change the whole. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see many combinations tonight. I think we might in the later rounds and in the next round. I think they're both trying to fill each other. They're both trying to fill each other out at this point. Spiller's definitely trying to use his movement, trying to use the skill set he has. And I think Carter's really just waiting on the shots that he needs. He's not gonna waste, he's not gonna waste his shots. They're learning on the job, literally. As literally. Amateur experience, they've sparred. Some good sparring that they're getting, but they're really just figuring things out. Literally learning on the job, yes. <laughs> right hand from Spiller. Yep. No knockdown. And is there no, no knockdown? Is the referee going to say it's a slip? Give me gloves. Give me gloves. Don't rush. Don't rush. Box. So four rounds scheduled, our first fight of the night, Golden Boy Fight Night. Ten seconds, guys, listen for the bell Final now. seconds of the opening round, Spiller landed a good solid left let him hand. Go. Let him go, stop, stop. Don't punch, got you, I got you. Five. <laughs> 
That's your shit, right? Throw it if you want to throw it, but don't overstep. You only overstep one time and you got hit. Like, control the range, even with the hook. Stay long with it. Yeah, stay long with it. Just turn it up on work rate a little bit, but I'm good. good. Turn it up off of the jab, though. Don't rush and run into nothing. And when you keep him turning, he's taking big, long, live and steps. But every now and then, once, once he's... Once he's... Do what you do. Do what you do. Look for the shot. Learn just to touch him. Yeah. Get your legs up. Start slipping. Get excited, dog. Don't don't. Get your mouth piece up. Hey, good action for Skula in that opening round, Marlena Sparza. No, definitely. Uh, Box. What'd you like from him? I I I I think that he's definitely using his movement and his skills. And we really need to see more. Carter needs to pick it up. It is a four-round fight. So he needs to show a little bit of something now because Spiller is really letting, like, Let go. really showing his skill set. Gotcha. Box, guys. Spiller, he's actually uh, with the same management group as our main event tonight, Scrappy Ramirez and also Sordo Ramirez. So he has that corner with him on that side. So he has people behind him. He, there's uh, the, the Olympian, the U.S. Olympian is in his corner too, Darius. Darius, yes. So he's had good work. He actually has sparred with Flip Hergovic. Yeah, he's had good sparring, good technique, uh, good good sparring partners. He's been around, um, you know, people with a lot of education in the ring. Partner asked him, uh, who trains in Southern California? Like, so anybody who spars, like, man, I just go to the gym and we just do work. Like yeah. that's... He's got that edge on him. You know, I think Carter, too, at this point, is fighting like it's a 10-round fight, and there's going to be a time that he needs to pick it up. So, uh, feeling somebody out is one thing, but using your skill set is another. I want to see a little bit more action uh, out of Carter. For Zach Spiller, first time fighting in the United States, and he gets a zone open here on Golden Boy Fight Night. First two fights were in Mexico. One in Sanada, one in Tijuana. I mean, he's doing well. Extremely well. For a guy with only four amateur fights. And the competition level has stepped up for Spill. I think he knows it's different from being in, in Mexico. Yeah, he's on, he's on his uh, P's and Q's. He's alert. I would like to see more jabs established by both. Uh, it's a heavyweight, but they're heavyweights, but they still need a... There we go. That right there, that's what you want to see? Yes, so they, the, and they just did it, yes. They need to figure out who... They need to test each other. Figure out their distance and then land what they need to land. The left, and we're followed by right from Spiller, the taller fighter in the ring. Body shot from Spiller. He's feeling very confident in between rounds, standing up, didn't sit down, was bobbing to the music. He has a calm, easy demeanor, does Zach Spiller. Ten seconds, guys. Let's go the bell now. Second round winding down, our first bout of the night. Going the boys fight night in Indio, California. Thank you, sir. Four round fight. Hey, listen, he's getting tired. Keep doing, but look at you, look at you're slipping. Kel, you're slipping. You're throwing the left hand. You ain't throwing this. Yeah, just let it go. He's not throwing but high punches, dude. Lean over and hit him. Hey, listen, we gotta win these next two rounds. So start throwing that hand. He's breathing hard, dude. Let's go. Start backing up. Hey, the leaning got a choice. You gotta go. Let's go. And trust me, I think the left hand is there. Hey, look at, look at. He likes to do this. Head to the third round. That's Khalil Carter, Long Beach, California. Carter coming up a upset victory at a fight in Southern California where he knocked out an undefeated fighter. This is the heavyweights 
not much experience, but they can slug it out. This is a Tim Bulk Sales special. That's my man about it. He's like, oh, this should be a fun one if they, if they slug it out. But they're not slugging it out, Marlene. That's what I expected. I, I, these two just go after each other. I did as well. I But I, I, I give the rounds to Zachary uh, Spiller. So far, he's showing more tactical, um, more ring IQ. And you heard Miller's uh, Carter's corner in between rounds. So you got to win these next two. You got to go. Yeah, his corner's well aware that they're not winning these rounds. Finally, we see a combination from Carter. <laughs> For more on this fight, let's go to Brandy Flores. Corner. I was in Slayer's corner, and they're not even bringing up the chair for him. His team is confident, but what they were telling him is they want to see him throw more combinations, especially that right hook. That right hook, that's what you want to see from Spiller's corner. Okay. Keep an eye out for that, Brandy. Thank you. Doing a great job. You have reports for us all night long. So you know Spiller because he was at a gym in Houston you know about? Yes, he was actually at uh, my gym for a while. Okay. Um, and then uh, moved to another gym, but I know him very well. Um, great fighter, dedicated, but right now he's doing exactly what he needs to do. And I don't see uh, a lot coming out of Spiller. I mean, out of, out of Carter, excuse me. Yeah, Spiller decided to chase his boxing journey. He left his day-to-day blue-collar 9-to-5 job that allowed him to buy a house, saved money, so he wouldn't lose his house, and he's chasing his boxing dream, and I just got tagged. Yeah, big right hand by Carter. And here comes Carter starting to step on the gas. Yeah, Carter's definitely landing those right hooks and left hooks. Zachary Lee needs to make sure he uses his jab. 6-5, keep him at bay with that jab. Less than a minute to go in the third round. Caught the attention. Let's go, let's go. Work your way out. Work your way out, guys. There you go. Yeah, these guys fight me like it's a 10 round, like they got time. It's only four, guys. I know. Someone has to go. Who wants it? We're going to wait towards the main event of Scrappy Ramirez, Luis Padilla. Uh, Golden Boy Fight Night. I'm expecting this next round's going to be very heavy. It's good when you get the heavyweights. It is. <laughs> Zachary feels he's winning, and Carter knows that he has to go in and dig deep. A British heavyweight icon returns to the ring. Anthony Joshua begins a new dawn against Jermaine Franklin April 1st. Watch exclusively live as part of your design subscription. No pay-per-view. That left hand is there, dog. Trust me, you gotta throw it. His hands are heavy, dude. He's slapping his punches. This is all. We, we gotta let them hit. We can't. You gotta take this round, dog. Go after him. Gotta take this round. Go after him. You agree? Yes. That's like, um, like I said, this Fox. next round should do. This last round should be pretty heavy. Um, Carter needs to catch up, knock him out, because Zachary's winning the rounds. Fourth and final round between the six foot five Zach Spiller, who's two and zero oh, with two KOs. Khalil Carter, three and three, three KOs. Carter, he said, we're just taking any fight anywhere. I don't care. That's the attitude he had. His last fight was six rounds. But tonight, yeah. throwing a couple punches in the last round, but I don't know if he's looking for that one shot. I think, yeah, he, it seems like he's looking for that one shot. Um, it is a four-round fight. He just took, took that. In, he should have took that into consideration. But um, he's doing well. I mean, Zachary's doing extremely well, and Carter really needs to just like pick it up if he's really trying to win this fight. I think Zachary's really comfortable now. Yeah, he's starting to look like he got the lather going. He's good. Yeah, he's bouncing. He's he's uh yeah he's in there. And heavyweights, it's always a development, especially as they get older. We'll start seeing them. 
in the late 30s. Hey, you can see him in the 40s. Hey, George Foreman, your man from Houston, won a title in his late 40s. Yeah, no, I um, it, it's a heavy, it's a heavyweight fight. It's a bit di more dangerous, but Zachary's doing really well. Um, Carter needs to pick it up. He has to go for it. Oh, good oh, effort, Carter. Spiller finally got tagged. Yeah, it seems like he do he wanted to play that didn't hurt, but I'm pretty sure that hurt. It was right in front of us. It, it was yeah, fun. that hurt. Yeah, that hurt. But he did a good job, and he needs to keep moving. He's still winning the rounds. Carter <laughs> knows it's a big stage for him. He said, as a teenager, he had the anger issues and played football with wrestling and some MMA. It's boxing that's called him. Well, Carter needs to use um, all that anger right now in this next 55 seconds. Well, that's a solid shot from Carter. His corner telling him you got to throw. Yeah. If I was in his corner, I would tell him he just needs to go. They've been telling him since the beginning of the fight. And Carter's eyes are just wide open looking at his opponent Spiller. Yeah. He's looking for that haymaker trying to land. And Zachary's alert, and he's a great boxer for a heavyweight, so it's not going to be an easy task if he doesn't really step on the gas pedal. Ten seconds to go in our opening bout. The heavyweights, Spiller, Carter. That'll do it for four. They shake in the middle of the ring. Now they're ahead. And we'll go to the judges. Scorecard between Zach Spiller from Houston, Texas. He's undefeated. And there's Darius. There's Darius, yeah. Nice prospect. Stable mate. Great prospect. But I had Zach, a chance. Zachary did his job. So. It's Mexico contra Uruguay as Angel Fierro defends his WBO and ABO. Lightweight title against Eduardo Estela. Watch all the action on the zone. But I'm just telling you, you gotta throw punches, dude. No, you throw punches. Dude's a fucking, he's a lot, dude. He's a he can't, he's not even a boxer, dude. Yeah, you know you're gonna put the work in. Be interesting to see the development of these two young fighters as we progress. Just gotta get comfortable. Move on. If you go up and under, you do it a thousand times, dude. Joe Martinez got the official scorecards. Joe's ready to go. He's in the ring. And Joe says he's ready. Should we toss it to Joe Martinez? Let's hear from Joe Martinez. Undefeated Zachary Spiller. So Zach Spiller stays undefeated three and zero, and uh, the crowd doesn't like that decision. Not sure why. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Not sure why. I feel like he did exactly what he was supposed to do. Uh, well, the Coachella crowd likes Carter, who falls to three and four, but Zach Spiller stays undefeated. Uh, let's look at some of the highlights from our first bout, which featured the heavyweights. It started off feeling each other out. Look at some action from the second round. Second round, they started using their jabs more. Established the fight. Yeah, and it was, uh, like you said, that would have been an interesting fight if they were going six, eight rounds maybe. The, they started off slow. We saw Carter pick it up some. In the uh, third round, yeah. He actually did win a round, so he ended up losing 39-37. All right, let's look at tonight's fight card. We got one done. Coming up next will be Steffi Cohen, the Ann Calderon, 
Then Gucci, Manny Flores, Franklin Gonzalez in the co-feature, then Scrappy Ramirez and Padilla in our main event, Golden Boy Fight Night in Indio, California. Body shots are gonna put him away. Gonzalo's been in there with some of the biggest names in boxing. We got a long list of great fights coming up on the zone. March 18th, Fulgo Ramirez, who's in attendance here tonight, gets back in the ring against always tough Gabe Rosado in the light heavyweight division. April 1st, Anthony Joshua returns to the ring against Jermaine Franklin. April 8th, this talented young man, Bam Rodriguez, takes on Christian Gonzalez in his hometown of San Antonio, Texas. And May 20th, the rematch. Oh, this is going to be fun. Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano from Dublin, Ireland. Heavy schedule coming your way on the zone. Great fights. Let's look at the tail of the tape for our next bout. This is going to be the first female fight we have for you tonight. There's two of them scheduled with the next one in the Bantamweight division. It's going to be Steffi Cohen. Stephanie's her name, but everybody calls her Steffi. She takes on Leanne Calderon. The advantage, of course, though, Marlene, the height as Calderon is five foot six. Yes, the, the height difference is going to matter, but sometimes it's easier to be the smaller fighter. So oh. we'll see how you use it. If you're if you're short, be shorter. If you're tall, be taller. How tall are you? And five two. Fight we are ready to go with our next fight tonight. <laughs> Four rounds. This in the bantamweight division. And ready to make her way to the ring first, fighting out of the blue corner from Austin, Texas. Here is Leanne Calderon. Austin, Texas, San Marcos, Texas also represent Leanne Calderon. With a record of one, two, and one, came to the sport lay, but she's has an extensive athletic background. A big opportunity for her. This is actually a fight that was going to happen last year, but they're back into the mix. Calderon and Steffi Cohen. She's feeling pretty good about herself. I actually spoke to Calderon's uh, trainer and said that she was going to give up uh, a few years back and actually saw an article of me that actually motivated her and wasn't mentioned, um, but that, you know, she's here and she said that she's really, really ready, ready to win. And um, she's and she seemed extremely, extremely ready to win this fight. Yeah, so I'm, ready I want to see. And her opponent ready to make her way to the ring, fighting out of the red corner from Miami, Florida. Here is Stephanie Cohen. Stephanie Cohen lives in Miami, trains in LA, Venezuela roots, has a PhD in physical therapy, over a million followers, but she's not an influencer. She's out there motivating, educating people about living the proper lifestyle. She was supposed to fight actually a couple weeks ago, but that fight got scrapped the day of the fight and is now back into the mix. Javier Razo was there and said, hey, matchmaker Golden Boy, I can put you on, let's go. I like your style. Here she is now in the Bantamweight division on the zone. What I really love about her, too, is that she's more about um, what can she do for people. So she's really wanting to influence people in a positive way, not just for show, but for real, uh, whether it's for health or not. It's, it's, she's, she's there for people. Here, ladies and gentlemen, we are set to go. Four rounds of action this scheduled in the Bantamweight division. Your three judges scoring at ringside once again are Pat Russell, Fernando Villarreal, and Damian Walton. When the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Ray Corona. <laughs> Introducing to you first, finding out of the blue corner. Wearing white with gold, she weighed officially 117 and one quarter pounds. She enters the ring tonight for the fifth time as a professional, hailing from Austin, Texas. Here is Leanne La Chingona Calderon. 
And across the ring, her opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black trunks trimmed in multicolor, she weighed in 116 and one half pounds. In four professional fights, her record stands at two victories, one defeat, one draw with one win coming by way of knockout, fighting out of and representing Miami, Florida, here is Stephanie Cohen! Fighters, two seconds. Mouthpiece, mouthpiece. This is good right here. If you guys want to touch gloves, do it now. God bless. Ray Corona from Bassett, California, the third person in the ring, a solid veteran. Mark, Mark. Four rounds, two minute rounds for the ladies. There you see Steffi Cohen. Two, one and one is her record, one stoppage. Leanne Calderon from Austin, Texas, one, two and one. Not much amateur Ready? background for either Ready? ladies, but they de dedicated their lives now to boxing. And it's Calderon, who's 35 years old. Stephanie Cohen is 30 years old, and they're going to come out and just slug. I guess they saw the heavyweights who weren't throwing and said, let's get after it. No, I also think they're just both going to slug it out. Everyone's trying to prove a point, and it's a sprint, two minutes. You don't have a lot of time. Since they don't have a lot of background, I'm sure they're just both trying to prove a point and get someone out of there. Cohen, you see her muscular build has over 25 records in bodybuilding. Uh, she was a power lifter. Her yeah. opponent, Calderon, was a fitness com competitor, made it to nationals in Vegas. So they're evenly matched. They're both very strong. Um, and of course, they both came in underweight. <laughs> you have to worry about that when you're a dedicated athlete like that. Very strong. <laughs> Because now it comes to skill set. Who can get the job done? Who can think? I want to see jabs. I want to see some plays. Cohen actually picked up boxing during the pandemic, was just training, and said, I, I have all the muscles from bodybuilding, but I didn't have the cardio. We started running and said, you know, boxing, I've heard a great workout. She was doing it in the backyard and came after it. Had a fight opportunity in Dubai, went, and she said it was good money, but I was realized I wasn't a boxer then. After that, came back, took it serious, has dedicated her new career to boxing, and is all about it all the time, and you see her way different now than she was a couple years ago. She actually has proper training. Yeah, and Calderon's really, he. she has distance, and she's using it really well. Um, if she can still use her distance and continue on, I think that she's going to make this a lot easier for herself. Good opening round between the ladies. Good round. I call her on. Al final del round, ella se pone brava, para ella con el jab y siga boxeando. No se prenda, no se prenda en el intercambio. Bien, relajada. Ese jab, ese jab es el que está ganando la pelea. Hay que seguir jabeando, sharp, cuando entra en distancia. Y después meterle el 1-2 rápido también. Combinaciones simples. Cuando está en distancia, se lo cambia por el 3-2. ¿Sí? Shot on 3-2. ¿Sí? 1-1-2, 3-2, ¿ok? You'll see it. You'll see it. Listen, don't overly think this. That, that was a close round, okay? I think we landed more shots, okay? But I need I need us to be on the positive side. You hear me? Let's go. Second round coming your way here. Go the boy fight night. Got the Duran alongside current champion Marlene Esparza. Our second bout of the night. Cohen in the black, Calderon in the white. Her corner, like what they saw from her, is Calderon coming in aggressive here to start of the second round. You said it, Marlene, it's a sprint because it's four rounds and only two minutes, so you gotta be impressive quick. Yeah, no, it's definitely a sprint, and Calderon is using her distance really well, but I think Cohen's team understood that she probably lost that round and needs to put a little bit more force. Oh, there we go. And gets dropped. Calderon got tagged by a good shot Five, from Steffi Cohen. Six, seven, eight, it was a flash knockdown, but it was definitely a knockdown. Solid right hand by Cohen, moves Calderon back. Cohen 
attacking. She sees something here with a minute to go in the second round. She's trying to finish this now. How does she do that? She just needs to keep coming forward. And she's giving her too much of a break now. She lost the opportunity. But she should have just attacked. Started. Yeah, she should have kept going. Shot from Calderon. Answering back. Yeah, now Calderon has a time to uh, has time to make this round even. So Calderon looks like she's recovered here. It's the second round. He's winding down. Maybe Cohen lost a little bit of her wind as well. Yeah, she took some big swings there. And she's breathing heavy here at the end of the second round. But a good round for Steffi Cohen. And she chops Calderon in the second. Third round coming away. Hey, listen. Listen. I, I, look at me. Look at me. I got you. Look, look. Listen to me. I need you to relax in there and go get her. Listen. She's not faster than you. You got to let uppercut go to the body too. You hear me? Hey, listen to me. You got you to gotta rely on your uppercut, man. Come on. All you have to do. She, she's trying to set you up for that too. That's all she's got. I need you to get that round back. You hear me? All right. Jab, jab, moving in. Keep her tip of your punch. As soon as she sets in, boom, go to the body, change it up. But don't pull your hands down. Don't kick your head up in the sky. You hear me? She's relying on that one punch. But she blew, she blew her tank on that, that combination. Let's go. Come on. I need to turn back. Great fight. Great fight. Good fight, man. Good fight. Yeah, um, definitely got caught with the right hand. She was keeping her front hand low and didn't realize that she was actually leaving that open. And we're in the third round. It's only four rounds here for the second round of the night at Golden Boy Fight Night. Both these ladies chasing their boxing dream. Leanne Calderon in white, 35 years old. Says she grew up watching boxing, and her and her brothers, Jay and Joshua, would actually have their own street fights. Calderon. And now they're scrapping here. Yeah, no, Calderon understands that she lost that round, and she has to make up for it. It's only a four-round fight. She's really going in for the kill. And I think she sees that uh, Cohen's a little bit gassed. She needs to move her way in with her jab and definitely work the body. Definitely work the body. If she works the body, that can uh, definitely help her finish this off quicker. A lot faster. For more on Cohen, what are they sitting in the corner? Let's go to Brandy Flores. Yeah, but the Cohen's corner really liked. That wasn't something that they've been working on, setting up that shot. But now they just want to keep pressing. They told her just keep boxing, keep the same tempo. Keep boxing, keep the same tempo. Calderon's not playing at all, Merlin. I don't think Cohen has the gas in her right now. She does. She is breathing heavy in front of us. Yeah, she seems gassed. And I think um, she needs to catch a second win really fast. Cohen is taking advantage of it. Or Calderon is taking advantage of it. You can see it in her. Calderon in white, who was dropped in the second round. Having a much better third. Yeah. Controlling the action and the pacer in the third. Yep. And now she's stalking. She's, she's attacking stalking. Cohen. She's stalking. If she can finish her off, and I think she can smell it. Good body work. Good movement. You even that round. After okay. delivering the fight of the year in 2022, Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano run it back in Ireland. May 20th. Watch live on the zone as part of your subscription. No pay per view. You heard her. You heard her. You go get her. Be looking at her face. Be looking at what she's doing with her face. Once you land the body shot, land some, look at what she's doing with her face. You hear me? If she looks like she's hurt, don't care. Let's be the noodle. 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 Let's be the noodle.
Yeah, different approaches in the corner. Calderon's and corner, the call one, Cohen, you can feel no pressure on that side, Marlena Sparza. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, regardless of the knockdown, they know that they, that they didn't do very well in those last two rounds. Fourth and final round, Cohen in the black, scored a knockdown in the second. Calderon came on strong in the third. Calderon married with two kids. Calderon needs to do exactly what she did in the sec in the third round, uh, going into this last round. If she needs to put the pressure and she really needs to make a statement because she did get dropped and she can't forget that. Both she ladies <laughs> came to the sport late, but this is their job. As Calderon quit her job as a phlebomologist. I hope I said that right. Phleb yeah. Yeah. Phlebotomist. There you go, flat one. Uh, to chase his boxing dream. Yeah, they're both giving up a lot, and uh, but they're actually doing very well in regards to the experience. I think it's great. Yeah, no, they're, they're doing very well. And Calderon needs to really keep the heat. If she wants to win this fight, she's going to have to keep that pressure. Cohen's not showing that she has that much gas left, and if you let her breathe, she will breathe. Cohen was it less than a minute to go. Some blood from her nose. This is good action. This is, it's only scheduled for four. Imagine if it was six or eight. I would have been. You can really step this in action. Hey, you got to step on the gas, though. Calderon needs to step on the gas. Cohen needs to use her jab. Smaller fighter. Break her down from the inside if she can in this last minute. 30 seconds. Somebody has to do something now to win this fight. Separate themselves. Good action, good scrap. Cohen and Calderon brought the here. Second bout of the night on Golden the Boy Fight Night. The ladies battling back and forth, exchanging punches to the final bell. And we go to the scorecards. What are we gonna get? A fight that was potentially gonna happen last year. This was made in a couple weeks ago, and it delivered here on Golden Boy Fight Night. I think they need to fight again, regardless of decision. Jesse Bam Rodriguez, he's coming back. He takes on Christian Gonzalez for the vacant WBO flyweight belt. Can Rodriguez continue his undefeated run, this time in his hometown of San Antonio, Texas? I remember seeing that kid when he was an amateur coming to Spar in LA, wore a t-shirt that had said Bam. I'm like, I like that nickname. Now he's a world champion at 22 years old. Yeah, bam, bam. He beat me up a few times. Oh, you sparred him? Oh, uh, yeah. Multiple. <laughs> good kid. Talented. He's, he's a good guy, yeah. All right, one of the left. Cohen and Leon Calderon. See some highlights from this bout. It started off immediately, Marlene, where they just went at each other. Yeah, they definitely were just trying to scrap and then got caught. Calderon got caught, flash knocked down, but then she came back and really proved herself out in the third and fourth round. Really took the fight to Cohen. So we'll see how it goes. So it goes to the judges' scorecards. Joe Martinez is inside the ring. Let's hear it from Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards and all three judges see it. 38-37, your winner by unanimous decision, Stephanie Cohen! 38-37, the knockdown, the difference, and Stephanie Cohen takes the cards. Unanimous decision, huge knockdown for the points. For Cohen, who's now three and one with one draw. Leanne Calderon falls to one, two, one, three and one. But still though, you said it, Marlene, I wouldn't mind seeing this again. No, I think they've seen this happen again. It was a great fight, but the truth is, is she did get the knockdown. So I don't argue with that decision. I think they put up their best. So Cohen leaves the ring a victor. We go back to Miami and learn a lot about herself. And you know, both Cohen and Calderon uh, 
acknowledging that they're pros later on in their career because a few years ago, there wasn't an example of who was there for them, one of them being you, knocking down barriers. Tonight's fight card so far victories for Spiller and Cohen coming up next Grant Flores working our way towards the main event of Scrappy Ramirez against Mexico's Luis Padilla go the boy fight night in Indio California He was born to be the phenomenon. God said, you're the one. March 4th, Misfits Boxing in the Zone return with the X-Series 5. Second event of 2023, headlined by Jay Swingler against Nikolai Perret, live from England. It's hard to take that seriously because he was such a joke of a fighter. The sun is set. It's windy in Coachella Valley. Fancy Springs Resort Casino, the home for Golden Boy Fight Night. We've seen two good fights in the books. Now we're ready for our third one. And this is going to be an interesting one. 18-year-old Grant Flores makes his pro debut in his backyard. He takes on Jorge Lopez from Mexico. This should be a fun one for the very talented Grant Flores. Joe Martinez. Nice. And now, folks, we are ready to walk out our next fight tonight. Four rounds of the super welterweight division. First to make his way to the ring, fighting out of the blue corner from Mexico, Jorge Lopez. It's feeling pretty good with Tucanes, the Tijuana gem, and Lopez knows that nobody here is rooting for him. He's from Querétaro, Mexico, but he's vibing. He's in the zone. I saw my breakfast this morning. He's like, I know. This kid's backyard. I have no problem coming in here. Though. You know what? When you're on the zone in your second pro fight, walk as slow as you want, Jorge. Take your time, man. We don't have a clock or anything. Definitely use those ring walks. <laughs> Definitely. You only get so many, and they count. Enjoy them. And now's when they're gonna just shove them into the ring. Like, all right, bro, you, you enjoyed it? You saw the camera? 
Let's go. Where's the yeah, stage no, manager? Now let's, let's go. go. <laughs> hey, you know, you're in Mexico. You're from Mexico making a U.S. debut. Why not? Why not? We can't fight without you. It's true, but enjoy your moment because it's about to happen. It's about to go down. And now this place is about to erupt. Yeah. And his opponent ready to make his way to the ring for the first time as a professional from Coachella, California. Here is Greg Flores! Eighteen-year-old Grant Flores with Antonio Diaz to his side. Antonio from jo uh, Diaz Brothers Boxing in Joel. Donio brings up the amateurs. He's told me about this young man, Grant, for the last three years. Not the biggest amateur background, he said, because he was such a pro spot style. He was sparring all the Uzbekistans they got in the gym. Correct, yeah, and I, I'm really excited to see, because, you know, Joel uh, talked about him and understood that he had a pro style. And, um, and what did he tell us? The most nervous part about tonight was going to be what? <laughs> the ring walk. Yeah, the ring walk. He's like, but yeah, what I do when I walk to the ring? Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Um, so I, I'm really excited to see him and, and what he's bringing to the table, to the boxing world. And later on tonight, his cousin Manny will be the co-feature. But right now, it's all about ground floors. And this is a sold-out venue because of the floors' cousins. Right. Joe Martinez, let's hear it. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are set to go with the next fight tonight. Four rounds in the super welterweight division. The three judges scoring at ringside once again are Pat Russell, Fernando Villarreal, and Damian Walton. When the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Ray Armendari. Introducing you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black with orange, he weighed officially 151 pounds. He enters the ring tonight for the second time as a professional, looking for victory number one, desde Querétaro, Mexico, Jorge El Beto Lopez. <laughs> and across the ring in the red corner stands his opponent. Wearing tonight blue with silver, he weighed officially 149 and three quarter pounds. Tonight, he makes his professional debut in front of his hometown, Coachella, California. Here is Greg Flores! Venga, venga. Aquí, aquí, aquí. Ya les di instrucciones. Calla con la boca, ¿ok? Ahorita no. Ya les di instrucciones en el, en el vestidor. Ahora espero que se... Pro, que, uh, Protegen bien, protégense como un profesional, ¿ok? Choquen guantes, choquen los guantes si quieren. Vámonos. Get ready to go for the pro debut for Grant Flores. Yeah, well, that was a good, that was a real stare down. I've never heard a ref say touch gloves if you want to. Yeah, it was uh, pretty intense. So, I think we're going to see a show right now. 18 years old, Flores. Jorge Lopez, El Beto. No relation to me. <laughs> and we are underway. And Grant Box. Flores, he's 6'1", 149 is what he weighed in at. He's been in this building many times as an amateur for a big time tournament. And he drops him right away! The one-two piece from Grant Flores in the opening seconds of the bout. I like that he's staying poised, although he knows he has a hurt. Flores, long jab, doubling yeah. up. Flores is showing professionalism on his pro, pro debut. He was very poised in our fighter meeting. He didn't seem like he was 18 years old. He started boxing at eight, and he gets hit for the first time as a pro. Counters, an uppercut from Lopez, all right. But he's not rushing in. He's he's doing exactly what he needs to do. He knows that he had him hurt, but he's still using his composure. Flores, Grandpa Mike took him to the gym with Tonio and Joel. Here he nice is body now. shot. Beautiful left body shot by Flores. Ten years ago, he walked into the gym. Now here's a pro on the zone. Looking good is Grant right Flores. Now. 
Lopez needs to do something only halfway through the opening round. Yeah, I don't think Lopez um, knows what he's getting into right now. He needs to just use his jab and, and try to figure that out. Uh, ran right into a jab. Yeah. He doesn't even use anything wide. Really just be safe right now. Lopez in black. Lands a couple shots. Bleeding from the nose, though. As we approach a minute to go in the round. I really do love that Flores didn't just go crazy and really uh, acted like a professional on his pro debut. It's poised, right? Yeah, he's a, he's a good thinker. He's really, he's really going for the kill. Slow and steady. He and his cousin were sharing the locker room in the back. and they have the big tournament, the Desert Showdown, where they'll have three different rings. And the fans were like, well, where, where, where's he gonna fight? Tony's like, for the first time, you're fighting where you're the only one. You're the attraction. Right. It's gotta be a great feeling for this young man. Absolutely, he did an amazing job. I mean, he he's showing exactly what he said he was. He trains with Chakra and Giasa, these other guys in the Diaz camp. And that's their main sparring partner. Let's look at the highlights from the first knockdown with the first couple of seconds of the fight. Oh, man. Yeah, he had a, a sneaky uh, left uppercut. Yeah, it was that sneaky left uppercut. And here's the end of the fight. Overhand right, that hook that got him. Lopez stayed on his feet, but it's only a matter of time. Yeah, he landed a good left hook, a right hand. And didn't stop too hard. He did it right. Really made the, really made sure. He stalked him or Yeah, he was stalking him. Like he didn't go crazy. He he landed and he was precise. He's gonna be an amazing fighter. There's something special about Flores. He'll be fighting at 47 next time. He's six foot one. Yeah, and no. Let's go to Joe Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. Two minutes, 35 seconds of round number one. Referee Ray Armendariz puts a halt to the bout for your winner by way of knockout tonight in his professional debut, Coachella Zone, Grant Flory! All right. I know it's only one fight. I know it's, you're supposed to get the win in your debut, but Marlon. This kid looks like he has something. No, he has something. This is a different type of fighter. Um, that he 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 performed in the movements and the way he actually planned the attacks. He's at, he looks like he has about like seven or eight fights already. It,
Now the big smile from the fans here in Coachella for Grant Flores. So the cousins are fighting. His cousin Manny's coming up later on the night. So far, 1-0. and oh. He's got a very professional attitude and approach when we talk to him. And I like his style. I actually just posted on my Instagram right now. Like, make sure you keep eyes on this young man. And when Tonyo and Joel, the trainer, talk very highly about it, we're talking about everybody who he spars in the camp. They really like him. So keep an eye on this young man as he develops in his career. Only 18 years old. Last year at this time, he was in high school. Here he is now on the zone. Enjoying the walk back. It's all Coachella because they'll be waiting for him. So we saw Grand Flores with the win. So far, heavyweight Spiller and Cohen with victory still working toward Scrappy and Padilla in our main event tonight. Times can even make you or break you. It was tough, but it made me. Marge is shaping up to be a memorable one on the zone. Check out what we've got coming in the world of boxing, MMA, soccer, wrestling, extreme sports, and more. Next up on DAZN's boxing schedule, on Saturday, Josh Wagner takes on Julio Udinuizzi. And that's this Saturday. Busy day, March 4th, KO artist Angel Fierro returns in Culiacan against Eduardo Estela. Also that day, X-Series 5 as Jay Swigler takes on Nikolai Pettit. And throughout the week, make sure you catch up on the latest news with Akin Barak of the DAZN Boxing Show. Fantasy Springs, home of Golden Boy Fight Night. Women are going at it again. Lorraine Villalobos, Kat Lindenmuth, the tail of the tape, and yes, Lorraine is 4'11". I, I, I think we're gonna say it's a little generous because she said, I'm not that tall. <laughs> but she can fight though, Marlene Esparza. 
she can fight. No, she's uh, definitely somebody that should, that needs to be on the radar. She just uh, had a different uh, coming up and realizes that she can be who she wants to be. Realizing that women's boxing is growing and she looks, she's changing everything about herself. So I'm excited to see what she brings today. All right, let's bring the ladies out. Here's Joe Martinez. Well, five fans, we are set to go with the next fight tonight. Six two-minute rounds. This scheduled female boxing in the minimum weight division. Making her way to the ring first. Fighting out of the blue corner from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Here is Kat Lindenmuth. So we have uh, uh, Catherine from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, spoke to her and she's, she has two kids. Uh, devoted everything, dropped everything she was doing to really uh, focus on her boxing. Really impressed by her story and the sacrifices that she's made. She's here to win and I really want to see what she does. And next to make her ring entrance, fighting out of the red corner from Los Angeles, here is Lorraine Villalola! Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, once again, six rounds of action this scheduled in the minimum weight division. Your three judges scoring at ringside are Pat Russell, Fernando Villarreal, and Damian Walton. And when the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Ray Corona. Introducing to you first, finding out of the blue corner. Wearing purple with silver, she weighed it officially 102 and one quarter pounds. In three fights, her record stands at two victories with one defeat. Fighting out of it, representing Albuquerque, New Mexico. Here is Cat La Huera Pistola Lindenmuth. <laughs> and across the ring stands her opponent, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing red with silver, she weighed it officially 103 pounds. In nine fights, her record five victories, four defeats with two wins, coming by way of knockout, hailing from Los Angeles, California. Here is Lorraine, La Chaparra, Villalobos! Ladies, ladies, mouthpiece, mouthpiece. This is good. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. God bless. Ray Corona, the third person in the ring tonight. Mark. For the minimum weight battle between Lorraine Villalobos and Kat Lindenmuth. There you see Lorraine Villalobos. Five and four, two stoppages. And Lorraine actually fought a lot heavier of a lot of her fights than she actually should be. She's fighting at, she's fighting at a smaller weight, which is her Ray. normal weight. And right. Linden Muth is right there with her. Albuquerque in New Mexico. We get after it, and Linden Muth comes out like she was shot out of a cannon in purple. Being super aggressive. Yeah, she's not here to land that jab. Yes, yeah, she's not. She's taking some big swings right away. It's Kat Linden Muth. 
He said, you're going to give me an opportunity to be on the zone, the biggest fight of my career? Why not? Okay. Everybody's here to win. But you got to remember, you got to pace yourself still. You got six rounds. Schedule. Bet the Duran alongside champion Marlena Sparza and Brandy Flores. Two minute round for the ladies here. Lorraine Villalobos training with Hector Lopez, you mentioned it, uh, TKO Bocci, because you tagged with the jab. I mean, I, I, everybody knows this about me, but I love the jabs, and, I, and she's she's using them well, Kat's using them well. Yeah, Linda move. mother of three, is working on her masters, Stop. and right now Stop. she's trying to work on Lorraine Villalobos' face, snapping that jab. Come on, really aggressive. I like this. Yeah, now it has to be tactical for for Lorraine. She needs to she needs to really understand what's going on and what she's getting hit with. I would love to see her use her jab or even counter those jabs. There she goes with head movement. If she uses a little lot more head movement, then she should uh, be able to get away from from those attacks from Cat. The frantic pace to open up this bout. We got lit. The Lobos and Lindenmuth going to keep CompuBox busy tonight. Lorena's shots are a little bit wide. If she could just straighten those out, it would help a bit. She lands a hook that was wide. And Lindenmuth is just right there with her, not going anywhere. Second round of action coming your way. Kat Lindenmuth is just going a thousand miles an hour, does not sit down between rounds. Well, remember she told you Marlene, she likes to run marathons and half marathons, so I don't think conditions would be a factor with her. Yeah, I know, she, she really goes off and thrives off her, her longevity. And she didn't sit down in a corner, she didn't even use the stool, so she that counts. with the left hook by Villalobos, who Hector Lopez, the trainer, said, use that against her, box her. Lorraine has fought for a world title on a couple days notice. Most of the fights of the nine that she's had have been called that week. This is the first time she actually had a camp and she decided to go with Hector Lopez. She said, they didn't know him. I knew he was being around training Ronnie Rios and Alexis Rocha. Works, like, ladies, work. I got tired of losing. I got tired of being the B side. She, yeah, she got tired of actually just not look, getting looked past. So they were looking past her, and she feels like she could do more. And she's, um, you know, now it's time to prove it. But Kat's coming for the same thing, and it's a, um, this is quite a battle. For more on the corner of Via Lobo, let's go to Brandy Flores. To change trainers for this fight now with Hector Lopez, where she had her first ever full training cap as a pro boxer. And during fighters meeting, she was almost giddy to get in the ring. She's worked so hard for this opportunity and is excited to see this hopefully a win put her career in the right direction. She wants to win world titles, guys. Come on, work. And Lorraine started boxing, she gets thrown down. She always boxed as a kid, her dad took her to the gym. What? really wasn't an opportunity. Let's go, let's go. Thanks to fighters like yourself. Now there is an opportunity for the women here in the second round. No, yeah, there's definitely a stage and they're showing that they can fight. Um, it's just gonna be, but it needs to be more than just a brawl. If uh, Kat's going in. Kat is attacking like no other. Good scrap, second round battle. There you go, baby girl. Just like that, all day. All day. Take a deep breath. Get down in that pad. Bend over at the waist. 
How you feel? You're in good shape, right? We're still not in cahoots. I'm still calling it out, and you're not doing it. Look at me. Get that fill. Get that fill and get that fill. Come on. There you go. Come on. The 12 working. Okay. Stand over. Stand over. Stand over and take a deep breath. Looking good. But you can't give it. You got it. When you do the underhook, squeeze down. So stop holding. Yeah. See underhooks? Squeeze down. Okay. Bend over. All right. Take a deep breath. I need that. Cat Linden move. Lorraine Via Lobos. Cat coming out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, Rosales Gym. Mentioned a mother of three. I'm very impressed by uh, uh, Cat's endurance. Uh, she's really here to win. And I just really want to see more than just banging, um, more brain behind what they're doing. Some boxing? Uh, yeah, a little bit more just strategy. Um, but I'm not going to lie, there's a lot of will in, in Kat, and it's really showing. Yeah. Kat doesn't sleep much. She's up at 4 a.m. to get her kids ready for school, goes to work. She was in our final meetings on her phone working, and she's like, hey, I'm answering calls right now. Yep, and you can see she has that fight in her. Single mother lost her husband a few Let's go, years ago. Let's go over. So that's the inspiration. Keep going as the stars on the back represent the family. A big opportunity to showcase what she's all about and it could change her boxing career. Absolutely. Oh, she has a good one too. That's Linda Booth. Albuquerque, you think of Johnny Tapio, maybe that loca? Danny Little Red? They come Work, to scrap, they come to fight. Nice. And Lynn Ruth has not backed away. Oh, she saw the right hand by Cat in Purple. Yeah. And right, Lorena right, right, can right, just kind of um, basically use a bit of foot feints, you know, um, maybe freeze feints, maybe just some sort some sort of something to kind of keep her away or keep her, or keep Cat at bay. I would like to see her use her jab, use her foot movement, and not just use the throwing. Yeah, because Cat wants to slug it out with you, right? It's yeah. It's like... Yeah, she can use head movement. She can tie her up. She can move, walk her back. Uh, so she doesn't have to work as hard to kind of switch things up. Stop with the bill. A frantic pace between the women. Ria Lobos, Linden move. As we're done with three here in India. She won't keep that same energy. Se está cansando. She's starting to dig deep, all right? Don't pull straight back, Lorraine. Okay, you're pulling straight back. Where did I say the last round? Pull to the side. She won't touch you, okay? She's all careless. Head down, uppercut hook, spin out. Spin out to either side. Our main event. Scrappy Ramirez on the left. El Callado, Luis Padilla, desde Guadalajara. Get the gloves on. That's coming up later on tonight. Great no, uh, Lorena's corner uh, told her that the um, cat wouldn't be able to keep this up. I, don't know. I, 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 I know, and I, I think that was a bad instruction. Uh, you know, uh, she's gonna have to dig deep. She can. It looks like she can keep it up. Oh. She's to figure out what to do about it. The elevation at Albuquerque, the Lobos, they call their basketball gym the pit. That's how hard it is. You know, shout out to Mike Cooper. They love coming in. They, you're not gonna have to worry about her conditioning. Yeah, my, my trainer James Cooper likes to say it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. So She's relentless. Exactly. Watch your head. Oh, oh, she gets nice. tagged with the left by Mia Lobos. Best shot of the night landed by Lorraine in red. And she gets tagged with the right from Cat. Doesn't stop. It, Cat's going to keep coming. When you've gone through so much turmoil and adversity in life, fighting in the ring is the easy part. For you, you, you fight the way you live. Um, the way you live is the way you fight, and it's just showing. She's had a lot of adversity, and she, she's not going to stop. Push back by the 
Work out of there, girl. La Work Vera there. Pistolita is the nickname for Kat Linden. She could be tired, but she's not showing it. You hear people yelling, wet eye. In the crowd, she's got some New Mexico fans here. She's gaining fans as she fights because, you know, she's relentless. If you get an opportunity to fight a Golden Boy fight and on the zone, we better show out. And that's what they're both and, doing. And that's exactly what she's doing. I mean, you said that Yoka, your, your career could change if you put on a show. I mean, literally attacking, attacking, and attacking. Yeah. She's the underdog. And she's the underdog her whole life, apparently. And she's doing what she needs to do. <laughs> hey kid! Good job, baby girl! Hey! You gotta sit in your punches. Take a deep breath. Bend over at the waist. You're in good shape, right kid? Hey! You need to be in cahoots, please! In cahoots! Round six, correct? Oh, and a big one took by Mia Lopez. Yeah, I think that could have took the round. I know that the uh, cat was being aggressive, but that was uh, beautifully landed. Left hook, and it was, it was planned. The best, best, punch of the, uh, best punch of the fight. Snot was flying. Knocked <laughs> yes. it out of her. Sweat and snot. I mean, I mean, what, what, how else are going to say, right? She, yeah. <laughs> shot landed by Lorraine Via Lovells. We're going back and forth. Fifth round of action. It was a beautiful left hook. Oh, you hear that thing right in front of us? Cat's not stopping. Yeah. Linda Muth, between rounds, doesn't sit down and doesn't take water. Yes, she's not taking water and she's not sitting on a stool. But she, and, and she's relentless. But she's locked in with her trainer. She just doesn't have quit in her, and it's a beautiful thing to have. You can't teach that. Good move box as a teenager for, just for a workout. Played softball, did everything you could think of. An athlete overall. And came back to the gym after the death of her husband. And now here she is as a professional chasing her dream. Definitely. I said coffee box is gonna be busy. What do we got? <laughs> Over 500 punches thrown between Lyndon Booth and Bia Lobos. The connection back around the side of Cat. Yeah, Lomos is really um, um, getting um, a lot of lessons in this fight, regardless of the outcome. She's, she's, you know, this is boxing. A nice left hook again, right hook. She's actually in the the weight class that she finally belonged in. She was fighting at Montana as high as that, just to take the fight last minute because they knew she was tough. Her last fight was against the Yoko Valle on two days notice. And not her weight class. But here she is in top against Kat Lindenmuth. They're going back and forth. Go the boy, fight night. It's a good matchup. Great matchup. Yeah, Kat putting her hand up and she goes back to the corner. With no stool. No stool, no, stool, no water. But this time she's... Lorraine, you need to win this round, you understand? You only throw one shot. What happened to the last instructions? Lorraine, you cannot go back while she's throwing. You can't go back when she's throwing. You need to throw a lot of punches. You have to win this round. It's a close fight. Yeah, you can you can definitely see Kat uh, is really just putting on the steam. She just she's rolling through it. She's really putting on the heat, and I'm not. And I'm, I, it doesn't seem like um, Lorraine can can keep up with it. You can even see her face. Um, you can look at both of their faces are. And all fine Touch. fans, here we go, the sixth and final round. But there's a lot of swelling, a lot more swelling on Lorraine's face. And the sixth round starts exactly how the first round started. Back and forth slugging. Work, work, stop, stop, stop. 
up. There you go. Let go. Let go. Let go. I would just like to see. This could be easily fixed by some head movement from either one. Yeah, we're not going to see that. <laughs> it would be nice for someone's <laughs> head, yes. It's a uh, strategy boxing. That's out the window now, Marlin. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you could still slip and, and hit. Let's just, well, they haven't done it. Let's just slug away. <laughs> it's just fun for the fans. Let's just slug away. No, I mean, this is an amazing fight. Um, it's an amazing fight. <laughs> Tremendous heart. Oh, I think Kat's hurt, actually. She got tagged with the left by Lorraine. Another left yeah. by Villalobos. And she does not stop this Kat Linden. Kat just steps and throws and steps and throws. Attacking, attacking from Albuquerque. You can pretty much say that Kat's from Parts Unknown, the way she keeps coming. Right? Yeah, no, that'd be even difficult for anybody, to, anybody to deal with. It's um, not an orthodox way of fighting. Battle back and forth. This is so good that Ray Carlin is just fixing his shirt and then I'm, I'm enjoying this scene right here in the ring. Nice push out by Kat. She didn't want to clinch. She said we're in a fight. 30 seconds to go in a good scrap. And the rain's face, you can see um, she's taking a lot of damage. A lot of damage. Final seconds to go in the fight. Back and forth, and that'll do it. What a fight that was. That was a good scrap. Amazing. Via Lobos, Linda Muth, thank you. They put on a good show. Here on Golden Boy Fight Night. It'll go to the judges scorecards. How you doing? Good. And Linda Moose showed up with a trainer. That's it. She picked up a second. She did amazing. Let's see what the judges have to say. Oh, a British heavyweight icon comes back to the ring. Anthony Joshua is going to begin a new dawn against Jermaine Franklin April 1st. Watch exclusively live as part of your DAZN subscription. No pay-per-view. <laughs> Let's look at the final answer. Linda still hasn't sat down. That was the last time there was a break. And in the second round, it just kept going. Yeah, that is just a freight train. That's just a, she was just, Kat is just going. Tons of pressure. A lot of punishment. Round four. Headbutts. Amazing left hook by Kat, uh, by uh, Lorraine. Yeah, the former high school cheerleader who was a cheer and a dance coach. Yeah, but Kat won't stop. She keeps going. She's she a boxer it. now. She keeps at it. Yeah. All right, it's going to go to the judges' scorecards. Pat Russell, Fernando Villarreal, and Damian Walton. We saw the copy box numbers earlier. A lot of punches thrown, a lot of aggressiveness. Neither of them really landed the big, big, heavy shot, but they were both effective. It's going to go to the judges' scorecards. Not necessarily a lot of skill, but a lot of will. And, and Kat uh, still... Kat, yeah, Kat is uh, impressive. She has... You want to tell her, she can take out her mouthpiece right now. Yeah. No, she's, she'll probably sleep in her mouthpiece. <laughs> like, she, she's here to... She's game. She's game. She's feeling good about it. She's a beast. Right. She, she definitely see is. See the final CompuBox punches thrown as the landing percentage was on the side of uh, Kat Lindenmuth. Both of them thrown over 400 punches. Yeah, still waiting on the decision. That's a lot of punches. Yep. That's a lot of punches. In six rounds. Yeah, in two minutes. You got to remember that, too. It's like, they, yeah, that's a lot of punches. They really put in a lot of work. All right, so Lorraine Villalobos, Kat Linden move. Let's see what the judges had to say about this one. Kudos to both these women. Well, fine fans, after six rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards, and here are the totals.
Pat Russell scores at 58-56 for Lyndon Mew. Fernando Villarreal has it, 58-56 for Villalobos. And Judge Walton has it, 59-55 for your winner by split decision, Cat La Huera Pistola Lyndon Mew. Congratulations to Cat Lyndon Mew. Split decision goes on the road, gets the victory. She's now three and one, and you can see the elation from Kat, the mother of three, all the sacrifices that she has to go through just to even train, and it all paid off for her. She's yeah. fun to watch. She dug, she she dug deep. Yeah, she's very entertaining. That's one thing for sure. You know you're gonna get to, you know you're gonna watch a fight when you watch her. And uh, Kat, yesterday in our fighter meetings. You know, we talked with her, and you know, she was praising you and uh, and all the women that have come before her to allow this opportunity to fight on the zone on a broadcast, come out here and have this, but also got emotional about what a win could do for her. It's great to see. Yeah, it was it, it was well done, and, and she showed that she wanted it. That's the best part about it. It wasn't given; it was earned. And so, Kat Lindemuth gets the victory. Two more fights to go. Manny Flores, and then our main event, Scrappy and Padilla. Golden Boy Fight Night, Indio, California. And this, I kind of went crazy. I wanted to go after him. The young gold <laughs> crusher. I only want to knock people out. He just kept this motivation going. I was like, wait a minute, this boy just doesn't stop. I felt like I had like hours to hit him with that shot. Boom! When I'm done conquering this division, I'll conquer the next one. I will be a true world champion. Man, what a fight. The very best action from around the globe from free running to Formula One and everything in between. This is the place to see exceptional athletes doing extraordinary things. Whether it's near impossible challenges or life-changing journeys of discovery, these are the innovators pushing the limits of possibility. Incredible moments, unforgettable stories. Welcome to the new home of action sports. This is Chelsea. If you've got new players coming in, you either see it as a threat and you kind of crumble with it, or you see it as a challenge and you thrive from it. On March 4th, Misfits Boxing in the Zone returns with X Series 5. The second event of 2023, headlined by Jay Swingler against Nikolai Parrott, live from England. It's hard to take that seriously because he was such a joke of a fighter. Oh, a huge list of great fights coming up on the zone. March 18th, Surdo Ramirez gets back into the ring. Surdo's here in attendance tonight. He tights on the very game. Gabe Rosado in the light heavyweight division. April 1st, Anthony Joshua makes his ring return against Jermaine Franklin. April 8th, Bam Rodriguez takes on Christian Gonzalez in Bam's hometown of San Antonio, Texas. And May 28th, the rematch between the ladies, Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano, this time, Dublin, Ireland. Back here ringside, one of the cool things about last week was the battle between Luis Neri and Don Hovindisian. I was able to work that broadcast alongside Corey Erdman and Sergio Mora. Let me just tell you, being in the ring after that fight, interviewing both fighters, you can feel the emotion from that battle. And let's take a look back at what could easily be a fight of the year contender. 
much. The term potential fight of the year is thrown around pretty liberally in fight promotion, but in truth, it is very hard to imagine a fight between Luis Neri and Azat Hovanesian that is anything less than at least very exciting. No, we could say fight of the year type fight because the styles are there to match. I mean, this will be an explosive fight. It will be an exciting fight. Fireworks guaranteed. The moment we've all been waiting for. The main event of the evening. Representing Armenia, here is Hazak Crazy A. Well, it's been hyped up as a potential fight of the year by fans, by media, and by these two men as well. There's Ovenisian come in with the hands up, chin tuck. He's ready to let them hands fly. By the combination here for Mary. Letting his hands go. Third counter left hook from Ovenisian as things are starting to heat up. And this is the fight we expected right here. As he goes back downstairs to the body and then a hard right hand up top. And another one. And with that right hand to the body that set up the right hand upstairs. And this is what Mary does. He's a boxer first, but then the Mexican style comes out of him. He needs to keep the Mexican in check tonight. Hovanesian just waiting to pounce. Big, and they're finding plenty of big shots right now, both Neri and Hovanesian. Like they told us, Hovanesian has heart to spare, and you can see it right here. He's not giving up. He's landing some big shots in this round. He's definitely rocking Neri. Neri better keep that chin tuck. The body shot by Hovanesian, and what a left hand by Neri. And Hovanesian's hurt, and down he goes. Just when you thought Neri was starting to erode, down goes Hovanesian. He is in serious trouble. Neri all over him. Can Crazy A survive? Unbelievable. This is determination. Determination by both men, and we expected this. When, we, when, when you hear battle of attrition, and that is it! I called it fight of the year. Azad Neri, fight of the year. Let's go! To the winner by KO, El Orgullo de Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, Luis La Pantera. Luis Neri got the victory, but Azaho Benicia, having known him for many years, fighting for Golden Boy, he said he wanted that fight because it was an opportunity to put on a show, and he definitely did that. Came up short on that night, got stopped in the love of the round, but Azat held his head high, and he's joined now by our Brandy Flores. Brandy is with Azat Benicia. Azat, we just watched what you went through not even a week ago. Now, were you reliving that moment just a little bit? Yes, I said moment in my chair, but it's not for him. I shot as a chum or scala, I shot scala. I am he's in the moment watching it, just mad at himself for some of the mistakes that um, that were made during the fight. That's it. A fight of the year contender. When you're you're a boxer, it's a gentleman's sport, right? You have respect for your fight uh, fighter, but when you both are bringing everything you have every single round, how do you maintain that respect even after the fight? Uh, I'm every time say I respect any fighter, same Neri too, I respect, but uh, I'm ready for coming three, four months, it's uh, coming a big fight too, same big fight too. And so the, it was stopped in the 11th round, now looking back at that fight, do you feel that that was the right decision by the ref or do you think he could have finished it out? He can't judge a referee on that, that's his decision in the moment to stop the fight or not, but he was willing to finish the fight out 100%, he's a fighting guy.
He was ready to finish the fight out at one of a situation. And like I said earlier, not even a week ago, how do you feel physically right now? <laughs> now I'm good, very good. Good rest, uh, good rest, I, uh, everything very good. Come back, I come back, 100%. All right, well, we're excited to see it. Until then, we'll throw it back to you guys ringside. Azad Hobadishian always battles, and uh, you know, Azad could easily just said, yeah, I don't want to go to the fight, I don't want to do this interview, and we would have respected that, but you see him there talking with Brandy, and Azad, he's going to take a well-deserved break, and he'll be back in the ring, because he has a very fan-friendly style, and it's a, an easy potential fight of the year candidate. Now, Gucci Manny Flores, why is he Gucci? Because Gucci Man is his favorite rapper. His cousin sold <laughs> earlier tonight in a first round of stoppage. Now, Manny Flores is the co-feature here in Coachella. He's battling his way up the ranks as he continues to move on. Not too long ago, Manny was the first bout of the night. Now tonight, he will be the co-feature. He said, I know that comes with more responsibility. I know I have an opponent who has 25 victories all by a knockout. I need to come out and put on a show, but I need to stay within myself. Manny doesn't have a promoter yet. He's still looking for one, but he said he will hopefully tonight can definitely change his career. There you see Joel Diaz on the right, Tonio Diaz on the left, and Coachella on his belt for Manny Flores. His, his given name is Manuel, but everybody calls him Manny. He's got the hair dye, he's ready to go, and he's got a sold out Fantasy Springs ready for him. His opponent, though, comes in with an impressive record of 25 and 1. All victories via knockout. He's very confident in himself. His nickname, El Abuelo, he said, because I look like a grandpa, even though I'm only in my mid-20s. Came in here, said, I know I'm the underdog. I know I'm the opponent. It doesn't matter. I'm confident in my abilities. Let's look at the tail of the tape for our co-feature tonight on Golden Boy Fight Night. All right, here it is. The younger fighter is Flores. The taller fighter is Flores, and he has a slight reach advantage. Manny Flores, he said as he progresses his career, 118 is his future. Undefeated, 14 and 0, 11 KOs. Our co-main is ready to go. They're ready to walk. Manny Flores, Mexican-American, against Venezuela, Franklin Gonzalez, here in Indio, California. Let's go talk to Joe Martinez. And now, fight fans, we are set to go with our co-featured bout this evening. Eight rounds of boxing this in the Super Bantamweight division. Ready to make his way to the ring first, fighting out of the blue corner. From Venezuela, here is Franklin Gonzalez! Franklin Gonzalez. Let me tell you about the amount of people in this building on his side. One, the person behind him walking in with him. That's what Franklin Gonzalez has on his side. He doesn't care. Los Teques, Venezuela is where he's from. 25 and 1, 25 KOs. We're gonna find out tonight if those 25 KOs are for real. Seen a couple videos on him. Has some power, some pop, it looks like. But tonight, the devil be. A good opposition against Manny Flores. Yep. You see on the graphic right there, 25 consecutive KO victories. His last fight is when he lost for the first time. All right, Joe, let's bring in Manny. And next, his opponent, finding out of the red corner, the undefeated Super Bantamweight from Coachella, California. Here is Manny Flores! There you hear the noise for Manny Flores. He's got the Tejana on. Donio Diaz to his right. Take it to the gym by his grandpa. Here he is, a professional with a record of 14 and 0, 11 stoppages. He is brother's training camp. 
El original, Jesse Morales, el original de la Sierra de Song is coming into the original. That's what he's jamming in. His last six opponents have been stopped. Not going past the fifth round. This was scheduled for eight rounds. And our five fans, here we go once again from Fantasy Springs Resort Casino, Indio, California, our co-featured bout this evening. Eight rounds of boxing in the Super Bantamweight Division. Brought to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and sponsored by Bet Online. The fight odds for tonight's fights brought to you by Bet Online. Your three judges scoring at ringside. Pat Russell, Fernando Villarreal, and Damian Walton. And when the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Ray Armendani. <laughs> Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black with red trim, he weighed officially 120 pounds even. In 26 professional fights, he brings an outstanding record standing at 25 victories, including 25 wins coming by way of knockout with one defeat desde los teques Venezuela. Here is Franklin, el abuelo González. And across the ring stands his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing multicolored trunks, he weighed it officially 119 and one half pounds. In 14 professional fights, he stands perfect with 14 victories. No defeats. 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Here's the undefeated super bantamweight from Coachella, California, Gucci. Caballeros, ya les di instrucciones en el vestidor, los cinturones están bien en los dos lados. Obedezcanme, sobre todo, protégense a todo tiempo. Choquen los guantes y a sus esquinas. We get ready for our call feature. 24 year old Manny Flores. Undefeated, everybody behind him here in the sold out Fancy Springs. And the opponent, Franklin Gonzalez de Venezuela, 26 years old. Listo. This one Listo. scheduled for eight rounds. Flores the Southpaw, his 18-year-old cousin, Grant, won with a first-round KO earlier tonight. Grant walked out with him, a family affair. Flores and stepping up in competition. And Marlene, you know this, you've seen it when you're a young fighter, you, you used to be in the first or second night. Now that you're the co main, things change up. What do you want to see from Flores tonight? You know, I just really want to see him be a professional and see what he what he does under the lights and obviously in his hometown. But he's uh comes out, you know, showing that he's poised and does have experience. They sell tickets, of course, in their backyard, but even today he's like I had to just stop because people kept calling out. I'm like, no, no, lock it on the fight. And there you can hear the manny noise yeah i just want to see make sure that he keeps his composure even though it's a lot of pressure he says that he doesn't feel pressure in the fighter meetings but we'll see but he's he's looking like he knows exactly what he's doing franklin gonzalez 25 and one all of his victories by a ko but they were against lesser opposition 13 of those fighters had limited experience. Two of them were making the pro debuts. But regardless, you're knocking people out, you're knocking them out. Yeah, I mean, the, it, he looks good on paper, but we're gonna find out they're both being tested today for multiple, and in different, for de multiple reasons. Flores weighed 119. It was always 120, it was agreed at 120. And Flores, with Joel and Daniel Diaz, the Diaz training camp. He spars the 122-pounder MJ, the champion. 
And for Franklin, it's going to be a challenge. I don't really know if he does well with South Poles. Or South Poles, they're, they're always difficult to fight. Oh, and he gets tagged with the big left from Flores. Welcome to fighting the United States for the first time. They're both trying to fill each other out right now. Gonzalez is definitely trying to, to see what he can get to the body. He knows he's a smaller fighter, so he's not really going to go in. He's not going to go in with straight punches. He's trying to work on the body, you can tell. Yeah, this is uh, you scheduled for eight rounds. You want to get round, get experience, and see what you're going against. If you step up in competition, things change. You know, you're no longer in the tent at Fancy Springs. You're in the, you have your own locker room. You have a bathroom. <laughs> yes. the, the little details though, as you progress up the ladder. Gonzalez is game. Punches, don't lean forward so he won't catch you. Tag him in, make him in, step back, and counter him the way you did it, and step out. Keep your front foot outside his foot. Speed to right all the time. He steps on your foot okay. all the time. So to prevent it, you have to step over his front foot. How do you feel? How do you feel? You need to bring the right shoulder. How do you feel? Okay. How do you feel? Haré eso, pero no te no te quedes mal. Tira algo, precioso. Okay. Okay. Esa fue tuya. Esa fue tuyo. Yeah, I think both corners actually gave really good instruction. You know, they're they're telling Matt, they're telling Flores to really just step in and step out, use his distance, his range, and they're they're telling Gonzalez to really try to counter, and that he won that round and just keep doing what he's doing. Both. Go, both have good, great strategies considering what they're facing. Gonzalez, a father of a two. He's got that dad strength because he's also a cement mixer. He's working with concrete every day. So you can have that power in his hands. Let's see if he can translate that into the ring. Yeah, he has that grit, but he has to make sure he can't make mistakes, not against someone like, like Flores. Yeah, he's got that build that he gets caught when he was moving around. That was off balance the way he got hit. Very compact is Gonzalez. You see Flores, a taller, lankier fighter. I think Gonzalez, the way he like brings himself down really low, huh? Yeah, and uh, but Flores is really trying to keep his range, keep his distance correct. Make, making sure that he, he keeps Gonzalez on the outside. And Gonzalez is really trying to figure out how to get in. Big swing and a miss from Gonzalez. He's really trying to counter because he knows he can't get in any other way. Good defense from Flores. Covering up. <laughs> Gonzalez flips in a jab. And they slip the southpaw orthodox. Step on each other's toes. Yeah, it was a slip on trying to counter. He's trying to counter because he can't get in. He's not the longer fighter. Dealing with the southpaw, he doesn't necessarily need to go to his left all the time. Stop, 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 stop. He doesn't need to drift to his left. If he could go more to his right. See so Gonzalez moving around, put the hands up, the ole. It would serve Gonzalez good if he would go to his right, not necessarily to the left. He's a shorter fighter, he's fighting the southpaw. So by going to the right, what does that do for him? It, it'll help him break uh, break that distance. He's only gonna, he needs to fight one shoulder, not both. Well, South, southpaws are used to people moving and drifting to the left. So it would serve him right if he if he could drift to the right. 
final seconds of the second round. Lorana Bell smacking that 10 second count. Time to keep it forward tonight. Ahí está, con el, 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 el 85, ahí lo ves, ahí le pegaste, le pegaste con el 72, lo viste, ¿verdad? Ahora, mira, más, más poquito, te estás moviendo, mueve la, mueve la cintura, no te, no te pescó, te falló. Mira, lo miras, que está, fíjate cómo está moviendo la cabeza, y tamealo. Si tú lo pescas con un 7 y la, el volado, pero tienes que poner atención. But watch it. Watch his overhand right. Cause that, that's why he's fucking shooting. He's shooting well. He's shooting well. Every time you go in, you good? and you yeah. step back, he's shooting well. Uh, he he cracks, but he's not. He don't hit hard. Okay, well, fucking tighten up on the mouth. Man, man, tighten up the fucking mouth. Okay. okay. Headed to third round of action, goes the boy Fight Night in Indio, California. Beth Duran, Marlena Sparza, the champion, and Brandy Flores, our ringside reporter. These are our co features scheduled for eight rounds. The southpaw is Manny Flores. Good instructions by uh, Flores' corner. Um, the, you know, they're telling him that he's only swinging and trying to counter, keep him at the end, and uh, we'll see really what, uh, what uh, Gonzalez is going to do about it. Gonzalez, 25 and 1 from Venezuela, if you just joined us right now. Still got our main event to come. Scrappy Ramirez, Luis Padilla, El Callado from Guadalajara, Mexico. So far tonight, we had Witt for Zach Spiller, Steffi Cohen, Grant Flores, and Kat Linden. A monthly Golden Boy fight night, developing fighters. Thank you for joining us on the zone, wherever you may be. Nice body shot by Gonzalez. Maybe some more of that? Definitely. Since he's a smaller fighter, he needs to work his way down. Uh, like, chopping a tree. Just like that. Beautiful. Body work, and Flores covers up. Not much out there on Gonzalez. The videos that I did find, he was knocking dudes out like, with no resistance. So didn't really get to see much of him boxing. I like his style. He's rugged in there. Yeah, no, he, he he's definitely looking for for those hard shots. It would serve uh, uh, Flores right now to use his distance, not go forward, keep his range, keep trying, him on the outside. I was trying to figure out, talking with matchmaker Roger Razo and President Eric Gomez, well, is, is Gonzalez power for real? Like, well, we think so. We're not too sure, but we're gonna find out. We're finding out now. He's really landing those shots. And he's sitting on his punches, huh? Yes, and he and he, he's I think he's catching the timing of Flores. Flores needs to go back to his boxing. He doesn't need to worry about what uh what Gonzalez is doing. He needs to stick to his plan and stay long. Keep him on the outside and break him down slowly. He doesn't need to be fighting Gonzalez's fight. Pretty sure Joe Antonio Diaz will let him know when they go back to the corner. But those levels, right? That's the reason we have the Golden Boy Fight Night for the development of young fighters and Gonzalez feeling really confident right now. I think Flores is, is getting a little bit uh, yeah. tainted into to fighting uh, Gonzalez's fight. He needs to stay long, keep his range. Gonzalez Flores heating up. Our co feature tonight. Venezuela and moving around with a little strut. He goes back to the corner, puts his hand up. Nobody cheers for him, of course. <laughs> Just his trainer. Yeah, it was a good round by Gonzalez. There you see Manny Flores. For more on Flores and his family, let's go to Brandy Flores. No relation. Yeah, definitely no relation. But earlier tonight, his younger cousin, Grant Flores, made his pro debut. And what a debut to make. First round knockout. I was talking to Grant in between this last round, and I asked him when he got that early knockdown, he said that he knew he had to keep calm and stick with the game plan. And he told us that before the fight, he was nervous about the ring walk. And I asked him, well, how does it feel now? He says, you know, I enjoy the hype. 
he's ready for the lights. And of course, you see him there in the corner of his older cousin, Manny Flores. And I asked him, you know, it's like you didn't even fight. You're there automatically to support your cousin. And he's like, yeah, that's my brother. Every Anytime he needs me, I'm there. And right now, I'm here to support him. That family affair, they went to the gym together. Thanks. 10 years ago. Now they're here. It's a beautiful thing when you have that type of support system. Because you can say you were in the gym throwing punches with me and have someone in your corner that you know is there for you. It's important. Fourth round of action. Manny Flores. Yo, that crowd was really, really hyped before. It's kind of quiet right now. Yeah, Flores really needs to take more uh, control of the fight. He can. He just um, needs to go back to his original plan. The way he started the fight. Long distance, keeping the range. All right, so now if you're a golden boy matchmaker, Javier Razo, who brought this fighter in Gonzalez, and you're looking at him like, oh man, is this guy maybe too tough? Like, because now you got to see what Manny Flores is all about. It's as tough as you make it. He has the skill set, he has the like. So, I mean, you're the matchmaker job is to develop these young fighters, and you got to figure out what kind of fighter you got when you're 14 and 0. Right? You can't baby him anymore at 14 and 0. Look, the kid's 24 years old. It's time to show us something, right? Yeah, it's time to show up. And he got caught by Gonzalez. Knees buckled. Stop, 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 stop. And for Gonzalez, who doesn't have the promoter, doesn't have the backing. Welcome to the United States. Show out and open up some eyes. This dude is tough. That's it. Do your job. It's time to do your job. You can change your career and your life. Exactly. And you have the skill set, so let's, let's, uh, do nice. That's right, how you answer. Right, right. Nice straight left. Straight left. Took the mouthpiece out. The mouthpiece out. in the hand of Ray Coming, that is. Gonzalez, Flores, back and forth. Good action here. Stop, stop, stop. And we're going to get the break for the mouthpiece. Time, time. Time to stop. Less than 30 seconds to go in the round. There it is. Gotta show up, gotta show up. And Gonzalez sitting on his punches, landing some thugs. Yeah, we're really gonna see Flores fight off his back foot. Another solid flurry from Gonzalez. They hurt you what? Huh? Manny, when you throw your punches, don't jump in too close. Everything at distance, everything at range. Come on. Throw your combinations, keep your balance in the ground. Okay? Keep your balance, keep your feet in the ground. Okay? Don't fall off balance when you punch, because every time you fall off balance, that's what he's connecting you. Give me the like one, two, and Look, step to your, to your freaking right. You already tried everything, bro. Now you need to fucking tighten up your defense Come on. and go get this guy. Stop pressure. Stay close to him. Is he hurting? Yeah, and it's quite a war. You know, you see right there, Flores is knees buckling. He got caught clean trying to slug. And then now you have, then you have Gonzalez's mouth fly, mouthpiece fly out because he just walked into a straight, straight left. So it's it's quite a war. They're they're going back and forth. Really good round. Fun fight here, our co-feature. Manny Flores okay, and go Frank Gonzalez. Now, go We're in the corner of Flores and you're gonna hear the voice of Joel Diaz. Joel, that round, what'd you see for Manny? Well, right now, he's just trying to get his timing because this guy, this guy's style is a little complicated, as you can see. He's jumpy, he's strong, you know, but Manny's been calm. The plan was to, you know, work with him three rounds, four rounds, wear him down a little bit and they start working. As of now, this is the time where he's gonna start uh, getting his explosion in. 
These are, well, this is one of the tougher fights that he's had in his career. You mentioned, I heard you talking to him saying to keep his balance. Is that where you feel like it's kind of lacking right now? No, definitely, because this guy is jumpy. You know, he's all over the place. So it's hard to catch a guy that is all over like him. So right now, it's about balance. He needs to maintain his balance, start walking him down. And that's just the way it is. I mean, obviously, every fight as you move on in his career are going to get tougher and tougher. So this is a good test for him. Thank you, Joel. You're welcome. Very polite at the end, Joel Diaz, too, but you can hear a little bit of that. Okay, something's going on Yeah, there's here. a bit of anxiety, and I think he's trying to say that he needs to get his position. Um, you know, you have you have a Gonzalez that it is a difficult fighter, but Flores needs to keep his position. He's a longer fighter. He needs to fight off his back leg. He needs to keep his jab. He needs to keep Gonzalez at the end of those punches. He does not need to go in a slugfest with someone like Gonzalez. Body shot from Flores. Briefly held Gonzalez back. And now Gonzalez gets his bearings. A herky jerky style from the fighter in black and red. He doesn't stop moving, he keeps on bouncing around. And that's where the position is going to come into play. If Flores cannot stay in the pocket and keep his length, keep his distance, and not allow Gonzalez to literally jump in with his punches, he'll have a lot easier time. And gets dropped! Gonzalez walked into the left by Manny Flores. A smirk from the Venezuela fighter, but he got tagged here in the fifth. Yeah, that was a beautiful right hook that he landed right on the temple. Will Gonzalez respond? This is a fight. Yes, it is. You step up in competition, you step up in levels. If you want to be elite, you got to get through this. Back and forth action. Flores Gonzalez. Golden Boy Fight Night. We bring you the show, we bring you the crowd, we bring that excitement in Indio, California. Tempo. Mira, necesitamos dos rounds. We need two rounds. Necesitamos dos rounds. We need two rounds. No te tumbó. No, eh, no te. Okay. Si me estás oyendo. You hear me? All right, let's look at the replay. Oh, it looks like you might have been pushed. It, it was a bit. It was a bit of both. It was a. It was intentional, but it was. He. I mean. He landed. He landed and then, and then did a push through. He helped it down. Yeah. Regardless, it was. Yeah, I, I would. I still count it as a knockout. Yeah, because it was, it was punch. It was intention. It was intentional. Yeah, and that was a. Uh, that was. That was the point of Gonzalez keeps jumping in. If he wasn't jumping in, he wouldn't have been so easy pushed out. You need to so fucking work. Go get him. Stay close to him. Hands up, todo tiempo. Don't pull back. We get ready to go. The sixth round. Gonzalez is going to trade with him. He has no problem slugging it up. That's the kind of fight he wants as Gonzalez is in the corner. Can we get out of there? Yeah, that started with a beautiful straight left from Flores. Keeping his range. The heavier shots are landed by Gonzalez of black and red. The boxing needs to be done by Manny Flores. Definitely. If he could sneak in those straight shots and then come in for the kill, it'd be easier done than just working straight in the pocket on Gonzalez's game. And we have a cut on the right eye of Franklin Gonzalez. He's up against the ropes now. Body work from yeah, Gonzalez is feeling it. Gonzalez is feeling the heat. Flores is really break, breaking him down right now. The pressure from the younger Flores, the southpaw. But if you're Flores, you got to be careful that you don't run into something, right? The haymakers are coming Exactly. And he's doing really good at making sure that he's there, but not there. He's keeping his range right now. 
He's trying to stay in the pocket, but he knows what, what, what's his distance. Body Great work. combination from Flores. Come back, Gonzalez. Flores is doing a beautiful job at flooring and making sure that he's there when he needs to be there and not there when he doesn't need to be there. I mean, when you're a main sparring partner for a world champion and you're in there three times a week with them, you've been in some battles. You run with those Uzbekistan fighters. That Diaz training camp. Oh. You have some of the elites in there. Yeah, he's, he's really pulling out his skill set right now. They both are. I was wondering if Gonzalez is for real with that 25-1 record and some of those knockouts might have been a little suspect. Nah, he, he, this dude's tough. This dude can box. Yeah, and he's here to win. He's, he, oh, yeah. he's trying to change his life right now. We asked uh, Gonzalez, what do you know about Manny Flores? He's like, nothing. He should know about me. <laughs> yeah, he said he was in there. He's going in with me. And that's exactly what he's showing. That's his mindset. Gonzalez said, I need to sell the product. Right now, it's Manny Flores selling the product. Look, it's strong in the sixth round. Yeah, Flores is uh, picking him nicely. Solid round for the Southpaw, Gucci Manny Flores. Light heavyweight contender Callum Smith returns to Liverpool. Taking on Poland's Pavel Stepien with one eye on reigning champion Artur Beterbiev. Can Smith secure a title shot with victory? You have to dig to the body. If you pressure it, keep your eyes tight. Dig the fucking you body. You're not throwing no fucking body shots, Manny. Okay. Actually, you're not fucking working at all. You gotta fucking work. Okay. Manny, you got two fucking Manny. rounds. Manny. You ain't fucking tired, baby. They're working on the cut. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play. Franklin Gonzalez and Ray, referee Ray Almendari just quiet. came over and said it was a result of a punch. And Flores jumps off of his stool here to start the seventh. Okay. Yeah. Flores, I think he can, he can smell the blood. Box. Seventh round, sketch for eight, our co-feature. Undefeated, Manny Flores, 14-0. Yeah. Flores, uh, I feel like he can feel his soul, um, Gonzalez's soul kind of leaving him. So he, I think he's, he's, he feels in control. All right, so how does he end it if you're Marlena Sparza? You keep, your, you keep your game plan and you keep going and you make sure that you don't make any mistakes. Keep your range, keep doing what you're doing. And when the opportunity presents itself, attack. Gonzalez ain't trying to box him, right? he's just trying to load up. Yeah, he's just trying, well that's his game plan the entire time. Yeah. It just took, uh, it just took uh, Flores a little bit of time to really catch that rhythm. Clash ahead. Careful with the head, leading in with the head. Blood from the left eyebrow of the Venezuelan Franklin Gonzalez. But he's not going into the eye as he gets his head snapped back. Flores is using angles at the end, right, right when he needs to. And uh, he feels really comfortable putting his hands up and just catching. Meaning he really sees the timing. He found his timing. Man, Gonzalez is relentless. He does not stop. He's like a little pit bull. He's just, he's yeah. just going. That's a great way to put it. A fighter that wasn't as tested in the gym like Flores might have already been caught. Definitely. He's, he has a lot of athleticism and it's really saving him as far as being able to, to prevent from getting hit on some of those punches that Flores has. Gonzalez friends with a kid, Roger Gutierrez from Venezuela, former champion. Power punches through six. See the pitch is thrown and landed by the two fighters. And the power punches. That was a, well, shot, a nice shot. A nice shot by Gonzalez. Gonzalez is uh, kind of looking for Flores to kind of fall in so he can land. 
Lars being smart, not letting that happen. Huh? And now, pawing at the left eye is Gonzalez. Punches landed, solid body work from Flores. Gonzalez comes back and has it with his own. And I think this is a really good round for Gonzalez, to be honest. The blood doesn't make it look good, but he actually is, he is landing the harder shots this round. Final seconds of the seventh round. A battle back and forth. Manny Flores, Franklin Gonzalez, we head to the eighth. All right. Hey, mira. Hey, ganaste this round. Hey, you won that round. Si me entiendes? You hear me? Es el, es el del último. Final round. round eight. Este es ocho. This is eight. A ver, no sé. Ahí vamos, ahí vamos. Ahí vamos, güey, mirando el Yeah, there was a nasty clash of hits. Uh, there was, Flores was kind of uh, leaning in and you also had Gonzalez jumping in. Yeah, Gonzalez doing well, uh, definitely doing well in this round. Because Flores leaning in. All right, so to clarify, referee just came over and told us the cut on the left and eyebrow go, is from a punch. The cut on the right Eighth eyebrow for Gonzalez from a headbutt. Eighth and final round. And we're going to have the doctors check out the cuts of Franklin Gonzalez. Want to check out the left one. That's from a punch. The doctors say we're good. Time in. Punch. Eighth and final round, our co feature. Flores, it would serve him well to not lean in. That's the only way that Gonzalez is able to actually land those harder shots. He doesn't need to lean in because right now, G Gonzalez is going to try to go for the kill. And the only way to actually land is if Flores doesn't use his reach. Flores keeping that guard high, the southpaw. Gonzalez. He said in the meter, he knows he's on foreign soil. He knows everything's against him. He said he wanted to come and put on a show. He's done that. He's a fun fighter. No, he's a definitely a fun fighter. It's uh, tough it's, as nails, too. Yeah, tough. And Flores, Flores, I think, is trying to prove too much of a point. He doesn't need to go forward. He needs to keep his distance. Because if he keeps going forward as a taller fighter, it's only going to give Gonzalez an advantage. Keep him up, keep him up. Flores can just keep him at the end of his punches and land those clean, straight shots. 14 and 0, 11 stoppages for Manny Flores. 25 and 1. All via KO for Franklin Gonzalez. This is going to be a difficult fight to score. Yeah. There was nice. a knockdown earlier in the fight for Flores. That could give him the edge, but this is a definitely a close fight. In his hometown, you got Coachella on the belt of Coachella Valley. A minute to go in the fight. If Flores would just stick to his straight shots, for the clash of heads. The co feature tonight, Golden Boy fight now. We talked about it in the open, about giving these young fighters an opportunity to shine, but it's also, you're going to be tested. It's, gonna, it's time to prove out. You're gonna find out what you are, especially at 24 years old. What do you got, what do you have? Can you suffer? Can you battle? Can you come out on top? Manny Flores, Franklin Gonzalez go back and forth. 
So the opening bell, and that'll do it. Eight solid rounds in our co-feature tonight. Crowd on their feet, and it'll go to the judges' scorecards. Gonzalez with his hand up. He feels confident about himself. That's for George He's He's fought here in India before. And the Montes Daniels defends the WBA Vert Welterweight Championship against the undefeated Virgil Ortiz Jr. April 29th. That's going to be in Texas. Watch on the zone to find out who will lead as the champ. Let's see how the judges score it. That's Joel Diaz Jr. right next to him. Nothing easy about this coming. Let's look at some of the highlights between Flores and Gonzalez. They started slugging right away, Marlena Sparza. Yeah, they did, and he, it was really hard for, for uh, Flores to find the timing. In the third round, he really started to pick it up and or really feel the heat. Then he found his way back. Was getting caught a lot, and then also in the fourth round, started to really wear down. Gonzalez. Gonzalez's mouthpiece flew out. And this Knocked is where we found out about Manny Flores, because he had never been passed the fifth round in a fight. And he got better after the fifth round. Exactly. I was curious to see what he did. And he continued to go and he got better and he contained it. Looks solid with eight hard rounds. Now, let's find out how the judges have it. Joe Martinez with the decision. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Here are the totals. Pat Russell sees it 77-74 for Flores. Damian Walton has it 76-75, Gonzalez. And Judge Fernando Villarreal scores it 77-74 for your winner by split decision. He is still undefeated, Gucci Mane. He had to earn it. A split decision from Manny Flores. Remains undefeated, 15-0. Didn't get the stoppage, but Marlena Sparza, I believe those eight hard rounds are going to help him as he progresses in his career. Yeah, no, he's going to need those rounds. He's going to have to take those lessons, and he's going to take. He needs to go back with his team and figure out what they can do better, and, and they, they are going to learn a lot from this fight. But um, it was a close fight, and it was a good fight, but, you know, he did knock him down, and, and that... One of those cuts was from a punch. So, you know, he, he did win. He, he did what he had to do. And there you see the Uzbekistan's coming in. World of Boxing. MJ, right there, you see the Diaz brothers. Uh, they're coming in strong. He has a good representation, and his cousin in the back with the shade, 18 year old Grant, started the night off with a first round KO. Manny Flores gets the victory. So, the Flores family, you know, they're gonna be partying in Coachella tonight. Uh, maybe Manny take a little rest, though. He, he, he took some shots back and forth. Definitely. Uh, they did, but then, you know, it's a good learning lesson. There's a lot of things that uh, got exposed, and they can go back and fix those things so they won't be an issue in the future. Better to find out now than later. Good job by Roscoe getting that fight made for us. So the co-feature was done. Let's look at the final punch stacks. 28 to 22% landed by Manny Flores and the total punches thrown. They went back and forth, they went at it. That was a good one. And I wouldn't mind seeing Franklin Gonzalez again. That kid is fun to watch, especially his style as he bounces up and down. So. Yeah, he's entertaining and dangerous. Oh, let's fill out the fight card. It started with the heavyweights. Now we're going 
to the 115 pounder. Our main event is coming up next. Scrappy Ramirez, El Callado Padilla on Golden War Fight Night. Y la gente empieza a gritar Canelo, el nombre de Canelo, algo increíble. I remember hearing that there's a new guy from Mexico touted to be a great. The crowd is electrified. This kid loves him. You just don't fight Floyd Mayweather at that age. Why would you do that? Y pues al final de cuentas yo quiero hacer historia. Ahí está, mira el golpe, ese. Eso fue un golpe muy importante en la pelea. The two Triple G fights were two absolute wars, two epics. That jab opened up a cut on the eyebrow of Canelo. That second fight was for all the marbles. Sentía como si me pegaran con algo de 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 hierro, de metal. It's over. Dicen que para toda acción hay una reacción y esa fue mi reacción. Oh no, G. was born to be the phenomenon. God said, you're the one. That was Scrappy Ramirez with one of the best knockouts of last year. Now Scrappy makes his return to the ring here at Fantasy Springs Resort Casino in Indio, California. Scrappy is looking to continue the undefeated start to his professional career. He's brash, he's from South Central, he talks a lot, but he feels like he can back it up. He's climbing the ranks of the 115 pound decision. A win tonight gets him a step closer to his first major strap. Standing in his way, El Callado. He's quiet, that's his name, Padilla. Callado means quiet or reserved. The 22 year old Luis Padilla from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, definitely lives up to his moniker. We couldn't even get three, four words out of him yesterday at the fighter meeting. He said, I'm gonna let it all go out in the ring. That's where I will be talking. Cause Scrappy, he talks a lot, but I can fight. Back here at ringside, Bethel Duran alongside the world champion, Marlene Esparza and Marlene. We know Scrappy, we've seen lots of guys like this in boxing where they talk a big game, but Scrappy says he can back it up. Why can he back it up? He can back it up because he has confidence and he's really gonna have to show that tonight. Both of, both both fighters are amazing fighters and they're very different and you fight uh, how you are. You have one opponent, the Scrappy, who's very vibrant and then one that's very quiet, a silent assassin. So it's gonna be interesting to see. Swim and don't get wet. Swim and don't get wet. You've been saying that because you want him to put on a show. I need, I, he has to put on a show. Yeah, you mean you have to talk your talk and walk your walk. And he definitely needs to show what he can do in all, in all angles. So he's gonna have to show out against somebody that's here and someone who's really coming for him. So we'll see how he goes. And his opponent though, comes from Mexico. He said, I have the experience on my side. I fought in Spain. I fought some of the bigger names. I know Scrappy. I know what he is. I'm not intimidated by a guy that talks like that. And when you come in and the only person on your side is your trainer, that's a different attitude, right? This guy can be dangerous. No, it, it is. It's a dangerous, uh, it's a dangerous opponent because he's he's here for 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 his job. There's no facade. There's no. There's nothing to it but that. Hey, I'm here to win. He wasn't bothered. He wasn't phased, and he wasn't here to do anything but say, Hey, I'm here to like win. 
And that's a that's a scary person to be against. Callado Villa Padilla, the quiet one. He's in that zone. He's been waiting for this moment. He said a lot could be on the line for me tonight, but his opponent, Scrappy Ramirez. His given name is John. Nobody calls him that. That's Scrappy. He's got everybody behind him. Surdo Ramirez on his side. The Zaho Venetian all from the same gym. But the rise to where he's at right now has not been easy. It's been a bumpy journey for the young man from South Central Los Angeles. He loves the bright lights. He's very cocky. He's very confident. But he feels like he will be the next big thing in the junior bantamweight division. I never thought I would become a boxer even though I was always a fighter. When you hit rock bottom and you don't know what to do with your life, you kind of get desperate, you know? I'm thankful I, I was wise and I chose the right path, you know, because I, I had options and I could have done something stupid, right? My family members have done it. My friends have done it. But I chose better for myself because I knew from the jump that I was going to be great. And I chose boxing. Don't ask me how or why. It's something something within that told me, go to a boxing gym. And I follow my instincts and like where I am now. I've been following the, the, his career. I know all the, the, the what he came in through in the past. And I feel happy for him because this is the main event for him. And I mean, it's great because all the fighters we want to be a main event, right? And now he has his chance, his opportunity, and everybody, everyone will see that the new fighter is coming uh, in scrappy, scrappy time. So I always have to prove myself to everyone, right? No one ever gave me the respect, so I had to earn, earn that the hard way. So I don't shy away from no, from no, from from hard times again, or any type of opposition. You know, I know what I bring to the table. I believe in myself and uh, yeah. It's any trainer's dream, you know, you get a guy with this much talent and then he's a gym rat, you know, like, and then when he's not only a gym rat, but he's not only a gym rat. Like there's guys that are gym rats talented, but when it comes to the fight, I don't know what it is, the lights, the whatever, he embraces all of that, you know? You know, we got the, the zone meeting, right? I went in that meeting saying that he wasn't on my level, right? Now, they thought I was cocky or arrogant. I'm a master of my craft. I, I study my opponent. I just knew he wasn't on my level. Come fight night, what I did to him, I destroyed him, right? Not because I was talking or I thought that I was better. I knew I was better than him. I studied him, you know? So to answer your question, I was patient. He made the mistake and I capitalized. The answer came early though. Night, night. Big fan of Scrappy as he lands a right hand. Oh, and he just knocked him out of the ring. Oh, my Scrappy's extremely hungry right now, and he understands that no matter who they put in front of him, it's not about them. It's about him, and it's about him being compared to the other champions in his weight class. So it's about, it's constantly, whether if it's not a knockout, it's a beautiful performance of boxing skills. You know, he, he he's in it to show that he is that guy, you know, and, and his mentality reflects that. Yeah, he's ready, and everyone will see that he's ready for the, these fights. And, and for those, those, those fight the champion fight too, and he will become champion this year. 11 months later, I'm right here, number one, and I'm headlining. So I knew it, you know? It was all about being patient and having faith. Listen, I'm, I'm number one at the WBA, so you know who I'm coming for. It's self-explanatory. Joshua Franco got the WBA. So after this fight, I'm gonna get the title eliminator and I'm coming for Franco. The inner city legend, that's what he calls himself. He wanted the main event, well here you go. Scrappy Ramirez is the main event on Golden Boy Fight Night.
At the young age of 15, he was destined for great things. Oh! oh. oh it's, it's, over. All over. it's over. He knocked him out cold. Oh, no. oh nice shot. Raw boy Canelo, pound for pound, best fighter in the Thank world. You. Thank you. Canelo is the beast. He can box at range, he can box up close. I honestly believe nobody can beat Canelo Alvarez. Resort Casino, the pool. Well, it was windy out here, so nobody was at the pool. But it's a fun, fun atmosphere inside the event center. The tail of the tape. Two young fighters. Same uh, reach, the weight right there. It's a mirror image, they're back and forth. The difference being that Luis Padilla has been a pro since he was 16. And that's the tail of the tape for tonight. Main event. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived to our main. Ten rounds scheduled in the super flyweight division. First to make its way to the ring. Fighting out of the blue corner from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Here is Luis Padilla! Well, here from Guadalajara. Zapopan to be exact. You gotta come out to the chante. El Tapatio is the song for Luis Fernando Calvo Padilla. El Callado. He's a record of 15, 3, and 2. The keys to the victory from Doug Fisher, the editor in chief of Ring Magazine. Slow the pace down, take him into deep waters, key number four. And next to make his way to the ring, the undefeated super flyweight from Los Angeles, California. Here is John Ray. He wanted to be the main event, Scrappy. He says he's going to put on a show. He's feeling that vibe. He's got the custom hat. Got the artist coming out with him. And it's interesting to say, I don't know how I feel about this guy. I don't know if I like him. I don't know if I don't. And you know what, Marlena Sparza? He and, don't care. And no, and everybody's going to make a decision tonight, for sure. And his trainer says he embraces this. And it looks like... He was right on point. Scrappy Ramirez. John is his given name. Nobody calls him that. Honduran dad. Guatemalan mother. South Central LA where he was raised. Calls himself the inner city legend. He's enjoying that ring walk right now. Well, he put a lot into his ring walk for Golden Boy Fight Night. <laughs> if this is what he does on a Thursday, what's he gonna do if he gets to Vegas on a Saturday night? I know they'll be they'll probably have to carry him out. But first, he's got to get past his opponent tonight, and it's a tough one. Let's look at the keys to victory, brought to you by Doug Fisher, editor in chief of Ring Magazine. Start fast, but we don't have to worry about that with Scrappy. Attack the body. That's something that I know the corner would really like, and walk him down. For Scrappy Ramirez, our main event. Fighters are in the ring in Indio, California. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for has arrived. The main event of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing this scheduled for the vacant WBA Continental America Super Flyweight Championship. Presented by Oscar De Loya's Golden Boy Promotions, is bound in association with Surdo Promotions. And sponsored by Bet Online. All of the fight odds for tonight's fights brought to you by Bet Online. Taken by the California State Athletic Commission, the executive officer is Andy Foster with Chairman Peter Villegas. 
The three judges scoring at ringside, Pat Russell, Fernando Villarreal, and Damian Walton. And when the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge from Bassett, California, Ray Corona. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Indio, make some noise if you are ready! <laughs> Introducing you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white with pink. He weighed in officially 115 pounds. In 20 professional fights, his record stands at 15 victories, three defeats, two bouts, even with two wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando el hijo de Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Luis Gallardo Padilla! And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing silver with black. He weighed officially 114 and three quarter pounds. In 10 professional fights, he is perfect. 10 victories, no defeats, eight wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the undefeated super flyweight from Los Angeles, California, Scrappy John Ramirez! Finally, the Temple Hack dude's taking off. They gotta fix the hair though, they gotta fix the fro. For Scrappy Ramirez, Surdo Ramirez on his side, Azajo Venetian. They all train at Brickhouse Boxing right there with young Julian Chua, who's an excellent trainer on the come up. Now it's, this is where Scrappy, okay. You may think he's messing around, whatever, but when he gets in the ring, he takes okay. it serious, locks in. And here good. we go. Want to touch gloves? Do it now. God bless. Here we go. Our main event, Golden Boy Fight Night, 10 rounds scheduled. The Super Flyweight Division, Bethel Durant, Marlene Esparza, the champ, and Brandy Flores, our ringside reporter. There you see John Scrappy Ramirez. Said he wants to put the division on notice. All right, well, we'll talk about it. About to find out. Be this about the moment it. we've been waiting for. Luis Padilla, El Callao. Ready? Ready. You got that. Callao, the nickname on the side of his neck. And right away, Scrappy comes in with a leading left hook, trying to make an impression. So he tried to catch him off guard, didn't do it this time. Last time he was in the ring, last May in Ontario, California, had a huge knockout. Literally knocked his opponent out of the ring. Scrappy Romero, 26 years old, started boxing just seven years ago. He said he was up to no good in the streets. He was always an athlete, played football. Early USD, Bernstein High School. Grew up in a rough neighborhood. So he was bust out of his neighborhood to go to Bernstein High School. Team was good. He was running back, played a little Juco football. Yeah, and it, and it drives him a lot that he that he's always, feels like he's always been an underdog. So I think... Um, He's really trying to show out, and he's not used to being, he's used to being under this type of pressure. Let's just say that uh, Scrappy, he knows he's short, and uh, he doesn't feel like he is. Correct. <laughs> this guy walks around like he's six foot five. <laughs> right, correct. <laughs> his ego needs a whole suburban. Yeah. That chip on his shoulder is definitely there, but the talent is going to be on display tonight. He's got to show it. And he's got a solid opponent in Padilla, who's 22 years old. He mentioned turned pro at the age of 16. Yeah, and with Padilla's uh, demeanor, it's a uh, we're gonna find out. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's very he afraid of no. of Scrappy at all. Padilla's gonna give you the rounds, only two stoppages. He said, but a lot of that was because in his younger career, he was finding guys that were grown up, so he had no way to, he didn't have the power at all. Yeah, he was learning on the job and didn't really want to sit down on his punches. I think right now what's going to be more of an issue is that uh, Lu Luis, but yeah, he has a little bit of an awkward style. Not sure if uh, Scrappy's used to that. He's not in war. And Scrappy, uh, he's a workhorse in that gym. He's doing well. R R Ramirez. 
Scrappy. Yeah, he's not John. He's not Ramirez. He's just Scrappy. Yeah, I know. Now we just call him Scrappy. Like, you know, I was at breakfast this morning. And his mom was sitting next to me, and she's like, "Oh, I was asking her a couple questions. Like, oh, Scrappy this, Scrappy that." And, and Scrappy, I'm like, do you even know your kid's name? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's his name now. That is, is. That is what it is. That's who he is. Good job from Padilla. Now come on the bell, gentlemen. First one in the box. Dang. You want it? Take it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You already touched him. Remember. You already touched him a lot, yeah? Keep your defense strong. Okay? Look. All of your combinations, make sure you have a body shot in there. Okay. Right? Yeah. Two levels, okay? As soon as you drop that body shot, these ones start coming in too. You got me? Am I rushing? No. You heard Scrappy Ramirez in the corner asking his coach, Am I rushing? What do you think, Roland? Um, I think no. I think he's. I think he's doing it quite well. I was actually more concerned with Lu Luis Espadilla's corner. They're telling him to use the angles. To they don't want to use angles. Um, that he's really not getting out of the pocket. He's just coming in with his hands up. I want to see if he's able to do that. Because if he uses his reach, does use angles, it will be a lot more difficult for uh, for Scrappy to get to him. Like that is exactly what his corner told him not to do. Do not just sit there with your guard up. Move. Luis Fernando Villa Padilla. He's won his last two, and his last fight was in November against the very tough and rugged Carlos Buitrago. That's exactly what they're looking for, for Padilla to do. It's hit and move, hit and move, and use angles, use your reach. Because Scrappy's just too fast and, um, you know, too athletic to be standing there waiting to get hit. You see the punch is thrown through round one. Right hand landed by Padilla and White, snapping the jab is Padilla. Padilla really needs to stay with the stick, with his, uh, with his jab. Stay with his jab, keep his angles, don't stay there. It's the first time that Scrappy scheduled for a 10-rounder. Where Padilla's been used to this, so it's in the safe. Now we go on. Mentioned that Scrappy has a war force. He's the kid that they got to kick out of the gym. He works out hard. Everything about him is at a frantic pace. Yeah, I do like that Scrappy's, even though he's a shorter fighter, is able to really time the longer fighter. He's really explosive when he needs to be. Good combinations, and that's hurt Padilla. Yeah, Padilla. He's up the ropes, and Scrappy's buckling the knees of the Mexican fighter. He needs to hold on. Body shots from Ramirez. Body work again from Ramirez. Padilla Going upstairs now. Padilla needs to hold on. Padilla's Going not right now. listening to you, Marlene. He's trying to train, and he's getting tagged in the corner again. Ramirez, one, two, wobbly legs for Padilla. Breathing heavy as the Mexican. He's game though, he's battling back. Final seconds of a very strong second round for Scrappy Ramirez, Golden Boy Fight Night's main event. I know, I know, just listen, listen. That's good. That's good. Look, when you're exchanging, when you're exchanging with him, you're a little too high. Okay, I need you to tuck in just a little bit more. Okay, keep everything down. Okay, 
Very good, okay? Off your defense, off your defense, that's where you punch in between, right? I, I don't really need like one for one. Fucking skills, you know what I'm saying? Okay? Just don't be too tall, don't be too tall. I know, you're already breaking him down. It's only the third round, you know what I'm saying? Okay? Yeah, with Scrappy's definitely putting on the heat and then really breaking him down. Really, really breaking down. Uh, Padilla. Um, I want to see if it continues on. That's what Julian Chua told his young fighter, Scrappy Ramirez. You're breaking him down. I think um, Scrappy's corner was right on point. You know, he, while they're exchanging, just keep your chin down, tennis ball, and make sure that um, you don't really let him get off. Scrappy's using his ring general shirt nicely. I don't, I don't think uh, Buddy ever really knows what to do with it. Yeah. Scrappy Ramirez is a persona that can rub you the wrong way. He would be that guy on a team sport where you love him on your team and you hate him if he's not on your team. Correct. <laughs> and that's where he got that nickname from. And he was also, because he said he got to a lot of fights with his own teammates. Because he's also one of those guys that works hard and is going to make you look like if you're not hustling or anything like that. But with Scrappy, though, he has, there's layers to him. He's had that rough upbringing. His brother lost his brother. His other brother, the system, as you said, his younger sister got an example for her. And you see the power punches through two rounds. Uh, Scrappy, I gotta do this to chase my family and do things. But he knows he's gotta, you know, bring the ruckus. He's also gotta create havoc. You can't be boring. No, and he's definitely not boring. But he has a lot more depth to him than he's letting people know. Yeah. He's not all show. He still has a lot of go in him and works with kids. Um, you know, he's been through a lot, but he's always here for game and he works hard. And he knows that there's a fine line between being that cocky guy that you want to see lose and the cocky guy that can back it up. Exactly. You brought that up to him. <laughs> well, I mean, you know I, that. Your own personal yes. experience of people saying, oh, Marlene's this, Marlene's that. Yeah, but you got to work for it. You got to show up. And he's he's obviously knows that. And he's doing really well. At the end of the day, it's what do you do in the ring? Exactly. Exactly. You could be whooping all you want and calling all the names, but if you're not performing... Then there's, yeah, then it's you're all show, no go, and apparently there's a lot of go in Scrappy. Watch your head, watch and this your is head. Padilla, stop, who's stop. gonna make it ugly. Accidental head, but accidental head, you see? Accidental head, Cal says. Scrappy doesn't stop, everything he does. Yeah, Scrappy's really trying to, he's picking it up. Now he's really using his legs, using his angles. Um, yeah, he's not playing around right now. It, I, saw, I heard his coach say round three, so this is apparently a game plan of how they're going to pick it up. Scrapper Ramirez, a lot of flair to the young man. He's controlling this fight. So the third round is winding down. And you see Scrappy, he always has a, a hat. He's always got some leather. He's got something. For more on the Scrap style, let's go to Brandy Flores. Yeah, guys, and this really just isn't style. Scrappy wears this all the time, and you'll notice right here, he has writings on them. These are reminders to himself. I'm going to flip it upside down. And you can see, always aim to kill the opportunity. And then right there, he says, I am great. And at the very top right here, I chose this life. This is what he wears every single time because he, as we mentioned, we're unpeeling the layers of Scrappy Ramirez. These are just reminders for himself. And as you can see, he's keeping his composure in the ring. Legendary is on that hat also. It means something to him. He said everything about him. And that hat right there. Champion, champion, champion written over and over and over because that's what he feels like he's going to be. Yeah, he puts it into existence. And he mentioned that in the fighters meeting. That, you know, you, you think what you are and you are who you say you are. So he definitely is big on visualization and speaking things into existence. Fourth round, scheduled for 10 in our main event. Padilla, his cousin, 
is Alfonso Gomez, a former Golden Boy fighter. He also fought in the contender with Sword Jamora. And he's here ringside yelling instructions to his cousin for the end. Alfonso fought in this building before. He had a heck of a fight with a good friend of ours, Kamigai. So they went back and forth. But he is a businessman. His family owns shoe stores in Sapopan. And right now, he's got to make sure he doesn't fall into a shoe shine from Scrappy because Scrappy's trying to put the one-two piece together. Yeah, definitely. But the other in this round looks like he's understanding that he does need to box. He's doing a bit better job of not just getting caught in a, in a turtle shell. Also, Regis Progre right here in attendance, sitting ringside. Sudo Ramirez. They all enjoy Golden Boy Fight Night. Scrappy looks like he can just do whatever he wants for now, doesn't he? Yeah, I know. He's having fun. He's really showing what he can do. Combination from the Mexican. I like that Scrappy's making adjustments um, as, uh, when, when Padilla does. Padilla's trying to do what he can do to survive, and Scrappy keeps adjusting to whatever happens. And I think that's, you know, that's a, that's a beautiful thing for a fighter to make their own adjustments. Scrappy with over 200 punches thrown for three and a half rounds. He's very active. You see him, he's got the charisma in there. He's got the orange socks, he's got the orange bangle gloves. Even though he's never been to Cincinnati. You fight like you live in uh, shows. An animal. <laughs> I chose this on his spine. He fights with personality. He lives with personality. And that puck for Scrappy, he's all doing his own commentary in there. I think, yeah, but he has hurt. You hear the woos from Scrappy? No, sorry, Blair Collins, that wasn't you. That's Scrappy doing a couple woos in the ring. Breaking him down, doing what he wants. I'm more late as far as him. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, has a good way of not showing that he's hurt. But uh, he's he's taking a lot of shots. I don't think he knows what to do. Another solid round in our main event for Scrappy Ramirez. Okay, you got to make it a little bit more uncomfortable for him, though. In what way? Get through activity. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Not not like defensive pressure. Okay. Start beating on him a little bit more. Okay. Single shots, right? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Just take and if you're not gonna throw single shots, use a touch shot beforehand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Touch, score to the body. Touch, score to the body. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Start breaking him down a little bit more. He's got to feel some more damage this yeah, round. I'm going to the body. Okay, exactly. Set up the right hand over the top with the body shots. You got me? Yes, sir. I got you. I got you. With the wink and the tap at the end. You know, I really like the instructions from his corner. Uh, he's a younger coach, but um, the instructions that he's giving are, are very precise and exactly what needs to be done. Julian Chua bit his bones at a wild card. That's where he saw Scrappy for the first time. Scrappy, when he uh, decided I want to box, went to wild card and said, uh, yeah, who is sparring? Anybody? Cool, no problem. What's your background? Don't matter. And just would not leave. That's where he developed the relationship with Julian Chua. And they're now at Brickhouse and Scrappy. Uh, see, that's the kind of stuff that gets you. Uh, you get the booze. Becomes a bit too cocky. Yeah. But you still gotta have the respect. Exactly. It becomes disrespectful. But, I mean, one day he's gonna find someone that he can't do that with. Yeah. I was like, do you wanna go the heel route or do you wanna be. Which way do you wanna go, right? Yeah, that's where it becomes a little bit extreme. But if that's how he wants to come off, that's how he wants to come off. Still a gentleman sport, respect your opponent. Exactly. Everybody's putting their life on the line. Yeah, and it's not like but he is avoiding you, he's in there mixing it up with you. Right. 
that I think that's the, that fine line that he has to figure out. In the last round, he was putting pressure with just presence. Now he's putting pressure with punches. Work, gentlemen, work. So I, I think he's gonna. I think he could finish this fight a lot faster this way. Padilla is tough. Padilla is game. But there's only so much punishment you can take. those little touch shots too that uh, his trainer told him to give. Yeah. Those are the ones that add up. Yeah. Whether he's banging hard, he's still he's still touching. A little higher, a little higher, a little higher. He's getting a little bit tired now. Uh, looks like Scrappy's kind of Good right hand from Scrappy. Great right hand. After going three times to the body, he's having fun. Yeah, that was a setup, definitely. Unexpected. He's going to do it again, looks like. Combinations. Body work, blood from the nose of Padilla. That was from that straight right hand, which was straight down the middle that Scrappy just gave him. Still look at. But he has to look unfazed though. Not phased at all. From Mazatlan, Sinaloa, home of the Venados, there's Surdo Ramirez. He'll be back in the ring taking on Gabe Rosado. The first fight of 2023. Surdo looking to bounce back after the first career defeat against Dimitri Bebol. That'll be March 18th at the Pyramid and the campus of Long Beach State. Party at the Nugget, the Dirtbag Baseball team. Excited for this. Surdo going to the LBC, the 562. And that'll be a good scrap. Jojo D is a Percito Hesta, the co-main on that one. More to come on what's going to happen in Long Beach, March 18th. You need a move. You need a move. That's all I was able to catch at the end. As their corner, I keep looking at the trainer. He keeps moving the microphone around. Our sound guy's doing a great job. Make sure the microphone's there, but I don't think the corner wants us to hear. As Scrap Ramirez jumps on him here to start the sixth round. Scrap is using his angles nicely. And that's what his trainer means by move. He's gonna be on you, so you gotta you got you have to move your feet. Work, gentlemen, work! Come on, hey, man, hey, man. Man, I'm on his back, he's on his back. But yeah, can't afford to just keep his hands up. He needs to move his feet. Yes. Good exchange. Scrappy and Surdo are an interesting combination. Right? It's like the movie Twins, with Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. Yeah, they get along well with each other. Yeah, completely opposite uh, personalities. That was on the air. That was on the air. And Styles of Fighting. Ray Corona and Lennon O's on the ear. Let's go to the corner of the Scrappy Ramirez. Consecutive. Yeah. Julian, yes. Scrappy is very poised right now. What do you want him to do to finish this out? Um, I think that if he goes to the body a little bit more to set up a, a nice headshot, that, that'll work, you know? Um, this kid can take a punch though, you know? Um, but yeah, more body work, more body work, that'll set up a, a nice headshot, whether it's an uppercut no, or no, overhead. No, no, no. Stop, stop, and we know stop. he has a personality, but what do you think when he hang back on the ropes a bit? I think he's just trying to entertain, you know? He's just trying to give a show, but I, I guess the crowd didn't like it, you know? But some people at home do, so he's who he is, you know? And how's he feeling right now when you're talking to him in between rounds? He's good. He, he's completely conscious of what's going on. He's understanding defensively what I want him to do and offensively what I want him to do. So he's completely here. He has his wits about him, and he's, he's boxing well. Thank you, Julian. Mm -hmm. Young Julian Chua does a great job with his fighters at Brickhouse Boxing in North Hollywood, California. Right hand from Padilla lands. That's probably the best shot Padilla has landed so far. Power punches through round five. All scrappy, 81 to 31 landed. You start to see the wear and tear. 
Grappy does not stop coming, Marlon. When you have a fighter like that, it, 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 and you know you're controlling the fight, but you're like, dude, what are you gonna stop? Yeah, it's a. Uh, it, he's not stopping, and that's really what he has. He's not controlling the fight. He's letting he's letting uh, Scrappy control the fight. And it's been all Scrappy in our main event tonight. Yeah, he needs to take a little bit more ownership in what's going on in the ring and not letting the fight happen for Scrappy. Saw the shot landed by Ramirez. The round is winding down. Our main event, Golden Boy Fight Night in Indio, California. He did a fight at the end. Listen to me. Yeah, it's hard to hear what he said in that corner. He's throwing a lot. He's landing a lot. You're staying closed. You got to counter. Round seven. You got legs, don't you? And then, they show me you have the hunger. So some instructor, he didn't like the way he was covering up when they're clenching. He wants to throw back. Yeah, he doesn't like that he's just staying in the shell. He wants him to counter off those shells and use his feet. Which is exactly what he needs to do. Staying there with someone with, with speed and accuracy like Scrappy is not a good place to be. But he is tough, Mitchell. Last time was against Bui Trago, who's always a tough out. There, it, like what he's doing now is exactly what his coaches not want him to do. Oh, there he goes. Moving. Catching and countering. If Padilla had a little bit of pop, this could be a different fight. Yes. If he kept fighting the way he's fighting right now, he's doing a really good job now listening to his corner. Work, work. Yep. Then mano, then mano. He's working out of the shell and he's moving his feet. If Scrappy does not stop. That motor keeps going. No, Scrappy looks unbelievable. I mean, he's in great shape. He's a, they run Griffith Park. They, this is the guy that they told me that after he gets them ready, he'll run extra. He sprints. The uppercuts landed from Scrappy. I like that he's been going to the body, too. Yeah, he, I mean, he has, he's, he has great athleticism. You can just see it all the way around. Now, when you talk to Scrappy, he will admit that, hey, I want to call out the, the champions. I want to take them on. He also knows he doesn't have the experience to take them on, but he won't shy away from it. Right. He has no problem going on the B side and say, hey, I don't have that experience, but, but this is good for him right now. Yeah, I think he needs uh, more fights like this. You know, if he can't if he can't get Badia out, it's gonna show him a lot too that he still has a lot more to learn than he realizes. Yeah, because if you're going Joshua Franco, if you're going to Maloney's, you're going to Japan, the elites in the 115 pound division. You gotta show something. Exactly. More blood for the nose of Padilla. Hook from Padilla though. I think Buddy is kind of really figuring out what his coach is trying to tell him because he's fighting off the, he's fighting out of that shell, which is actually catching um, Scrappy. And then Scrappy has his back with an uppercut to split the guard. Another uppercut from Ramirez. Scrappy's not realizing that although he's he's winning and, and punching, that there's always something coming back. Ole. I, I love the angles by Scrappy, though. I really do. I love the angles. You see the progression in the young fighter. Definitely. We started fighting seven years ago. Yeah, you could. You and no one would. You couldn't tell. It looks like he's been boxing for at least 15 years. Yeah, in this division, though, you can move quickly, and that's what he wants to do. Scrappy looking good in our main event. I know. Give me another round like that. Yeah, now that the hard shots have been coming, let those feints go walk him into something else. You know what I'm saying? Okay? Look. 
a lot of this stuff, remember, again, it's set up off the body work. Your straight right hand of the body has been landing like crazy. Okay, as soon as you get that going, again. Yeah, so now you see he's grabbing, like go. throwing. Okay? He's really he's trying to get him out of there. But consecutive hard landing. shots. Consecutive and then, hard yeah, shots. But yeah, trying to okay. throw back. And Scrappy realized, okay, yeah, there is something. This was scheduled for 10. Graphics looking clean. Great job, everybody in the truck. Directors, producer, everybody working behind the scenes. Fun hey. night here hey. at Indio, California. Hey, Golden Boy Fight Night. Hey, Always a fun show. Beth Grand, Marlena Sparza, and Brandy Flores. Now we go to the eighth. Let's see what Scrappy has in the tank. Can he close out the show? He's been controlling the fight, but Marlene, it's not how you win. It's not if you win. How you win? It's how you win, and he's doing a great job. He just, if he's if he's dominating so well, um, we, I want to see if he can get him out of there. Especially when you've been talking all that trash about how I'm the new guy in the division. I'm this. I'm that. Yeah. Or sitting uh, on the ropes. Yeah. Um. You, yeah. You really. You got to show. You got to do extra now, Scrappy. Like we said in the beginning. What, what was your line? You want to see him get in the water? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Swimming don't get wet. Is he doing that? Uh, he's doing well. He's, he's a little wet. He's getting a little wet, yeah. Getting hit. He's doing better at realizing things are coming back. But um, I, w I would want it. I want to see him uh, get by the out of there. The way he talks. Huh. See, he just got wet right there, basically. And you heard the reaction from the crowd. Padilla and Scrappy going back and forth. What's Padilla's corner saying, Brandy Flores? Did not let Scrappy get inside because he's too fast. And as you can see, he's trying that right now, but they also told him that just he knows what to do to just go do it. And so listening to his corner is what's going to save him right now. Get a little rugged in there. You see Red Corona warning about the elbows. Yeah. You know, I, I, I Scrappy looks amazing. I just, uh... He does. Conditioning, never a question. I, I, the fight. I think it's just the personality thing that kind of, like, you want to see more, you want to see more. Um, but he, I mean, but he's, he's doing an amazing job. The body work and the combination, he did the controlling his fight. John Padilla. And across the way from us, you see Sordo and Bernard Hopkins talking, and they're both have their hands up throwing the punches. You, yeah, they're they're both feeling it. They both know it's tactical. And that that angle was beautiful. Like he's making beautiful moves. And Padilla's good at being able to roll with the punches, slipping them too. Definitely. But because he's doing everything when he wants to do it, the question is, why aren't you getting him out of there? The bell, gentlemen. Eighth round, winding down, our main event here in Indio, California. Ah, the fan favorite, Tragos Amargo. Well, that means uh, we're about to close down the party. You're, you're rolling that shot real nice, the right hand, but I'd love to see you come back off of it. Yeah, right underneath you. You got me? Okay. Every time you get him up here, up high, whip that shot here or come up underneath. You know what I'm saying? You got, you got two rounds. You got, hey, listen. You got two rounds to put this guy away, okay? Let's make a statement. Okay? Don't get reckless, but push yourself, okay? Sick of me, yeah, sick of me. I know you love, love me, I know you care about me. Scrappy fans, right now, you're gonna love your guy. Uh, get your boxing and chill ready to go here at ninth round. Again, uh, it's co uh, Scrappy's coach gave, uh, you know, he, he knows what's going on. He said, make a statement and get him out of here. Um, 
he knows what's going on and he knows what they need to do. So let's see what uh, what uh, Scrappy can pull out. That's Julian Chula said. Make a statement. Look, we know Scrappy. We like him. Yeah, but his coach has a full understanding of, you know, he has to prove a point given his personality. There's some booze in the crowd? Yes, there are. The Mexico chants are coming out for Padilla. And you hear the crowd turn into Padilla's side. He's not winning this fight, but the crowd's on his side. Yeah, I don't know if they're more on his side or they're just not on Scrappy's side. That's a great point right now. Let's look at the power punches through eight rounds between Ramirez and Padilla. All on the side of Scrappy Ramirez. As you see, controlling this fight from the opening bell. The first punch thrown was by Scrappy. The bigger punches by Scrappy. You see the copy box numbers landing. Good hook from Scrappy. Nice, nice hook. That really caught by the other tension. That's why he's shelling up. This is what Golden Boy Fight Night is about. Oscar DeLoya. So if you want to develop the fighters, give you a series during the middle of the week where you can watch fights, you can see these fighters in prime time. And very entertaining fights, very good matchups. You're going to see wars, definitely. you got to pass the test, but how do you pass the test? Because if you want to be the Saturday night headliner, if you want to be the one all over the world on the zone, you got to put out. Yeah. Without the show. And boxing is not about throwing punches. It's about knowing when to throw the punches. Everything is tactical. Everything's a setup. And if you can't, if you can't figure that out, then you don't desire to headline or be on a Saturday night fight. Yeah. You can want it, but you got to show. You got to have the talent. Exactly. You've been there, done that moment. <laughs> too, for too long. <laughs> Good action. Good action here in the ninth round. I think the crowd really uh, picked up um, Parilla's uh, energy. Yeah. No, 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 no. He's changed it after the seventh round when his corner said stop hugging and just go after it. Yeah. But it's just been all scrappy tonight. No, it's definitely scrappy every round. But uh, Parilla really, uh, I feel like he got a second win from that crowd cheering him on. They're just exchanging. Um, Padilla's not giving up. And every time Scrappy throws, Padilla throws. Definitely probably the best round for Padilla and really trying to fight back in every, every exchange. This is yours. And uh, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the 10th and final round. Tenth and final round. Hi, right, Marlene. How do you close this if you're Scrappy Ramirez? At this point, he's going to have to keep doing what he's doing and hope that he can catch him. Because I think he literally has pulled every tool he has out of his toolbox. But Padilla is not going down. I think it, it served him well to concentrate on the body. He's going a lot to the head, and that's really not getting the job done. Padilla was knocked out in Spain a year and a half ago. As he said, a fight that I should not have taken, a fight that I shouldn't have signed. And when I got there, I knew I was done. I got knocked out the first time. Like, that was the worst performance. After that, I got to change the else. But this one, he had a full cap. He came in tough. He came in game, but it's been all Scrappy Ramirez tonight. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but again, if he wants to get him out, maybe he's just contrary on the body. Because you can't escape that. Apparently, but yeah, I could take those shots in the, to the head. Haven't seen a lot of body work. 
Total punches through nine. It was all scrapped through rules. He's approaching 700 punches thrown in this fight. And the, and the crowd is out of war. Yeah. Just like in the ring. You hear a Scrappy, you hear a Talia, you hear a Mexico. Halfway through the 10th and final round, can Scrappy put away the tough Luis Padilla? He's game. My goodness, this guy is tough. Scrappy still bouncing on his toes. Good one two upstairs. Scrappy with some blood in his mouth. Corazón que tiene Padilla. Scrappy right there with him. Si tiene corazón, for yeah. sure. A lot of heart. Scrappy lived in Honduras for a few years as a team. Honduras dad, Guatemalan mom. He's tough. Less nice. than a minute to go in the fight. First time Scrappy's going 10. Yeah, and, that, and that's also good for Scrappy that he, had, he got those rounds in. Oh. He just took a peek at a big screen to see how much time is left. Big shot. He said, oh, you hear that? Ooh, ooh, that was for Scrappy, not me. Don't admire your work too much. I mean, at this point, you've landed everything. You, you've hit him everywhere but the bottom of his feet. So it's just, we get it. But are you going to get him out of there? No. That's a tough dude coming from Guadalajara, 22-year-old Luis Padilla. Now I understand the silent assassin part. Yeah. Yeah, he's not playing around. He's... He's not going to give up. The Scrappy Ramirez came in the night. The main event controlled the fight. It looked good. And they go the distance. Beautifully done by Scrappy. And the blood is flying right next to us. <laughs> we just missed it. Oh, the crowd. Okay. In and out. Oh, blood on my phone, Marlon. Blood on my phone. Yes, I see. Um, let's find some sanitizer. That's but that's good. That's what I like because, I mean, we had a flurry at the end. That was nice. Yeah. Lorana Bell, the timekeeper tonight. Blood on the hammer, blood on the bell, blood on the cards, and respect between the two fighters. You know, at the end of the day, Scrappy, he understands the professionalism. He puts on a show. Yeah, dominated and did show and did show how talented he is. Yeah. All right, let me get the blood off of my car so I can read what it says. It's Mexico contra Uruguay. Angel Fierro defends his WBO and ABO lightweight title against Eduardo Estela. Watch all the action on The Zone. That'll be March 4th. There's a Rajo Venetian. Good 10 rounds. The Scrappy wants to call out the bigger names in the division. You got to get some of these, this experience. Yeah, he needed those rounds. Maybe the crowd too, the way the crowd, crowd responded to him can kind of uh, guide him a little bit more on how he wants to, to come across. Oh. I respect it too. We got the particular from Joe Martinez. Joe's looking for the card. They take off the gloves of Scrappy. All right. Joe has the decision. What we got? And now, ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. And we do remind you, the winner of this fight will be crowned the new WBA Continental America Super Flyweight Champion. Here are the scoring totals. Fernando Villarreal scores at 100 to 90. Pat Russell and Damian Walton have it, 99-91. All for your winner by unanimous decision. He is still undefeated, John Scrappy Ramirez! Let's go, thank you. Thank you, Tim. So Scrappy Ramirez stays undefeated. He wins a belt that can help him get into the rankings. He's now 11 and 0. Then he get the stoppage, got the victory, and uh, even the WBA tag fell off of his trunks. As Hakeem, Bernard Hopkins' partner at Golden Boy, the Hall of Famer himself, is in there with Scrappy. Bernard knows a lot about working a crowd and winning. 
Let's look at some of the highlights from the, our main event here on Golden Boy Fight Night. It started right away, Scrappy jumping on his uh, opponent, and it was going to be a theme for the entire night. As the power punches all landed by Scrappy Ramirez, back and forth. His opponent was staggered at times, but then he saw his opponent from Jalisco, Luis Padilla, battling back and forth. And as the fight progressed, you knew that Scrappy was in time. Uh, Padilla went back and forth with Scrappy. You he heard Julian Chua, the trainer for Scrappy Ramirez, letting him know that he was controlling the fight, but he needed to see more out of him, started picking it up as the fight progressed. And you had the feeling that this was going to go the distance as he had a very tough game opponent from Zapopan Jalisco. Unable to get the stoppage, but he got the victory. Scrappy Ramirez. He's been calling out the names in the 115 pound division. He wants the big fights. Well, he got the victory. Let's hear from Sca Scrappy Ramirez who's inside the ring. All right, Scrappy. You took care of business, got the win. Your opponent refused to go down. You could have easily gotten frustrated. What helped you keep your composure and stick to your strategy? Really just following the game plan, which is coming out. There's a system to this, you know, smart uh, fights more. Um, I wanted to take him out at one point. Then I just told myself, you know what, just break him down. And if the knockout comes, it comes. I wasn't really looking for the knockout. In the middle of the rounds, I was. Then towards the end, I'm like, you know what, just keep following the system. Uh, he's he's tough, but you know what? I need the I need the rounds, so I'll take it. You know, hey, I'm right here. Everyone everyone doubted me. You know what's next? I need the title eliminator. That's what's next. I need the title eliminator. All right, you said it there yourself. Taking all my questions from me now. This crowd at first they were on your side, but then the tide kind of changed in the middle of the fight. You heard a lot of boos, but that's no sweat off your back, right? I don't I don't care. Listen, I'm right here. Everyone doubted me. I came from the bottom, so keep doubting me I don't listen they booed me they cheer for me at the end of the day they still paying attention so keep watching I'm right here to take over and listen I keep I keep hearing people calling me cocky now nah, this is self-belief hard work and dedication when I was at the bottom ain't nobody care about me now I'm at the top this is all work man I deserve this so I want to thank myself for that thank my team I want to thank Golden Boy uh the zone everyone who believes in me thank you my doubters thank you so you already said you want the title eliminator, yes, but sir. what's next? What's next? And say, do you have anybody specific? Title eliminator. That's uh, that's next. After that, I, I need the champion, Joshua Franco. He got the WBA. It's not personal. It's all business. And you have you're not shy at all. You saw the flair in the ring. People are gonna love you or hate you, but they gotta watch you, right? They gotta watch me. Can't nobody stop me but myself. So, yeah. All right, congratulations, Scrappy. Back to you guys ringside. I'm taking all the risks, baby. Hey, come on, baby. Let's take a fit. Uh, even after the microphone's away, he doesn't stop talking. Uh, he keeps on going. Scrappy Ramirez. Uh, very interesting. Of course, the Eliminator is what he wants. Says the name Joshua Frankel. It's all business is what he said. You know, I like that. Say something. Instead of the, uh, let's see what my team wants to do. Let's see what my, my coach is the trainer wants to do. Say the names. Come on now. Yeah, I mean, he, did, he, uh, he said names, and that's good. And Tyler Eliminator, he has a plan. Um, you know, but he still needs to be aware of the uh, fans, and, and he said he doesn't care, but he should because he needs to put butts in seats. And, um, but, I, I mean, I'm, I think he did an amazing job, and I think that's what he needs to focus on and, and, and really trying to just perform and be better. Scrap season is that flag that they're waving. There you see the team from Brickhouse Boxing. So victory for them tonight. The final punch stats. It's all scrappy. You see him landing 32% of the punches. Over 700 punches thrown by Scrappy Ramirez tonight. Less than 100 landed by Luis Padilla. Huge fights on the zone. It's not just Golden Boy Fight Night. You have the big shows coming your way. Anthony Joshua, Katie Taylor, Bam Rodriguez. The Zone brings you some of the biggest names in boxing in coming months. Don't miss any of the action. All available via your The Zone subscription. No pay per view.
Uh, tonight's fight card, I got going with the heavyweight Spiller, Cohen, Grant Flores, Cat Lindemuth, Manny Flores, Scrappy Ramirez with the victors tonight on Golden Boy Fight Night. A good night of. Всегда хотелось именно раздавить соперника, где-то даже его уничтожить, а не поиграть с ним в шашки. То есть хотелось просто взять и съесть его. Nobody wanted to fight him. I mean, he was killing everybody. If I was going to go out, I wanted to go out on my shield. I'm in fifth gear going backwards, and he's not even broke first. Good pace on those jabs by Golovkin. Now we've got a war. The both men are firing what they've got. This fight was the biggest fight in the world that could be made. Был самый амбициозный, самый настроенный боец в моей профессиональной карьере. Его план сразу не получился. Мой план сразу сработал. Tough times can even make you or break you. It was tough, but it made me. and you didn't get a picture with Scrappy, uh, you did something wrong. Everybody got a picture with Scrappy tonight. Marlon Esparza, he got the victory. Young man really enjoying that moment. He had to work for it, though. It wasn't easy. No, and he did. He should. He should enjoy it. Uh, he has a lot of work to do. You know, he looked amazing. But again, even like his coach said, he, they wanted to get him out of there. And there's some things that, you know, you take the lesson and keep going. And he knows what he wants. And he did an amazing job. You know, the t tonight was an amazing uh, performance by everybody. This is the type of fights that uh, fighters need and people want to see. Yeah. Golden Boy Fight Night is all about developing fighters. Yeah, we would love to see some knockouts, but getting quality rounds is very important. So Scrappy Ramirez, as he wants to progress and move on to hopefully a championship fight, going 10 hard rounds, really realizing you got some wrinkles you got to work on, it's going to help him moving on. Definitely. He learned a lot, and his team learned a lot about him. You have to dig deep, and going, to, you know, going all the rounds is something that you have to do. You have to go through it. And I think that he just learned a lot, and he's ready to move on to the next. All right, we had six good fights. Did you have some fun? I did. <laughs> it was it was entertaining. It, it was. really was. Everybody was was trying to prove a point, and everybody showed it. There was a lot of heart, and there was a lot of entertainment involved. Make sure you follow the Golden Boy social media accounts for all behind the scenes pictures. You want to see me and Marlene dancing around, having a good time? You'll definitely get that. That's it. That's a wrap. Golden Boy Fight Night is done for this month for a great night of boxing from Indio, California. It was really cool for everybody. Behind the scenes, in the truck, producers, directors, stage managers, everybody working the cameras, thank you so much. For Brandy Flores and the champion Marlene Esparza and the rest of our Golden Boy Fight Night crew, I'm Bethel Duran saying good night from Indio, California. Body shots are going to put him away. Zerto shot connected. Zerto's been in there with some of the biggest names in boxing. Zerto Ramirez.